do consider speeding up with settings to consume this content in a fraction of the time. Hi, I'm Steve Forrester. Hi, I'm Kyle Poole. I'm Travis Tim. And I'm Paige. And welcome to the New Dice podcast. All right, we got it the second time around. <laughs> and yes, we're here with a new podcast, episode five. And today we're going to do a Goblin Army review. And why did I do that? Because I am just for uh, started my, my foray into Goblins. And if you've been following my YouTube content, I've been talking about the different armies that I'm, I'm trying to find what I'm going to play for 2023. And hopefully by the time this airs, uh, you would have followed my videos and realized that I'm landing on goblins. And since I am trying to figure goblins out, what better way to do it than to just invite a panel of experts to talk about goblins. And here I have uh, once again, Steve, Cal, Travis, and myself so before we go any deeper i'll just like each of the players to introduce themselves so steve tell me about your gamer origin story and uh your experience with goblins i guess started with pokemon cards back in the late 90s that turned from pokemon cards to magic the gathering to uh i think seventh edition warhammer then fourth edition 40k and then i Started playing Kings of War in 2012 um, in first edition and been Kings of War ever since. Um, so, yeah, uh, my history with Goblins, um, it's pretty much been my main army since 2019. End of like Clash 2019 book is when I started playing Goblins. It, I have the most reps with them any armies that I have. And it's uh, one of my favorites. So, and I'm, I'm also going to be running them in 2023. All right. And you have been playing a lot of games on Universal Battles, right? Yeah. How yeah. Every time I see people asking for a play by email game and I'm like, I got you, fam. <laughs> so you are yep. I think the most active player of uh UB with uh yeah, play by email. I'm, game. I'm a uh, notorious UB UB voyeur. So if you see today's <laughs> dad Steve hop it in your game, it's just me. I like to watch. <laughs> right. <laughs> that it didn't come off right but and like at one any point of time in a week how how many games do you usually have running how many play by email I, games i usually get 3 to 4 in per week awesome that's that's a lot 3 to 4 yeah, games yeah a, a lot week? uh matt gorham from the uk i play a lot mm-hmm. uh, mike zellmeyer i play a lot Paige, we play a lot mm-hmm. um and then uh, my club mates nate uh nate Noah Hutton and uh, Joey Greek have get into it too, so we're playing some good games now. Yeah, and don't sell yourself short. You have been, uh, I think, climbing the ranks and getting very good results from all your experience uh, playing, especially on UB. I think you yeah. recently placed well in the tournament. Yeah, I I got second overall and best general at um, Mountaineer GT. But I was playing Night Stalker, so I was playing a, I was playing the game easy mode. <laughs> well, well. Uh wow, thanks. So let's move to Kyle. Do introduce yourself. Well, like Paige said, I'm Kyle Dino Lord Pool is my proper title as Dino Lord Lord of Dinos. First of his name. Uh, first of his name, last of his name, thank God. Uh, the gamer origin story, I was born into it. Uh, my dad had been wargaming since before I existed. He will probably continue to wargame until the end of time. What does he play? Uh, I grew up, uh, we played generic fantasy like Chainmail 2000, and we played a lot of historical. So 10 millimeter American Civil War, uh, 8 millimeter World War II, micro armor, uh, like a weird 18 mil, 20 mil Vietnam, um, and then lots of generic fantasy. So growing up, we'd be like, hey, let's do a castle siege on a Sunday. 800 orcs on the table, because why not? So I've been wargaming since before I even knew what wargaming was. I just thought that's how you hung out with people. Wow. Um, 
I've moved through the arcs, right? I did 40K. I've dabbled in this, dabbled in that. I've disappointed my parents with uh, Warhammer Fantasy. <laughs> I gave my life to Magic the Gathering. All sorts of, all the, the classic blood sacrifices. And then I found Kings of War First Edition in college. And in college, I played War Machine, Mordheim, and Kings of War. Because those were the three games I could play on a skirmish table or with cardboard squares in college. And then when second edition came out, I bullied uh, my best friend, Eric Trowbridge into trying it. And I've been hooked on Kings ever since. And I have played goblins pretty much since the beginning of when I was four years old. So that's why I play goblins now. Wow. 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 I'm a one flavor man. <laughs> Do you play any other armies? Uh, experimentally, I play orcs, And elves are the two Kings of War armies I have the most experience with. Um, I can pilot Eric Trowbridge's orc list with my eyes closed. And I own an elf army. Um, I'm actually good at it. I own an orc army. But boy, they're not goblins, Paige. So it doesn't really count. <laughs> so why are they uh, recent, most recent spoils as a goblin general? <clears throat> um, most recent, I earned best sportsmanship with my goblin list called No Sports Boat Variant 2. <laughs> and you won by sportsman. <laughs> yeah, um, I took fourth overall at the King of Monster GT in Arkansas, hosted by Dylan, where we get to bring in Kaiju. Um, I went undefeated day one. Round two, I had to fight my best friend and clubmate, Dan. And how all GTs go, one of us wins and the other one gets beat way down. So mm -hmm. it's his turn to win. And he so, went on to win uh, best, best overall, right? Yeah, he went on to win best overall. Uh, the guy who took second place also beat me. Mm -hmm. And then I still came in fourth with two losses because no sports vote variant two is a, just a really <laughs> good list. <laughs> But that's my most recent. And then hobby wise, uh, I'm down to less than 300 goblins left to build. <laughs> so it's, we're turning the tide. Right. All right. Thank you, Kyle. So next let's move on to Travis. So I'm, Travis Country Boy, as uh, Rob likes to call me, because uh, I basically live in no man's land, USA. Um, I've been playing since I was seven, so very long time. My uncle got me into gaming. Uh, we used to go to conventions all the time. I played, you know, I started out with like Mage Knights and uh, Disc Wars, if anyone remembers the old Disc Wars um, way back when. Um, but yeah, I've moved into Fantasy 40K um all sorts of other tabletop games flames of war bolt action just different things um when the world blew up for fantasy we went to kings of war um i got adam billy involved back in when i basically moved to omaha at the age of 10 so the three of us have been gaming for a long time together going to tournaments all that good stuff um but yeah i just play a lot of a lot of games like everyone else who basically is doing this um but yeah i don't know what else awesome and you placed uh pretty well in the 2021 masters um so yeah the last uh couple masters i missed this last year because i had uh, my fourth kid um but the two previous masters i placed third and second respectively and then the one before that i placed top 10 um mm -hmm. all with all three of those with goblins um I've taken roughly the same list those two years. I took second and third, very few tweaks. Um, we'll show it, obviously, here going forward tonight and talk about. Um, but, yeah, very consistent with Goblins. I, I generally do very well. Awesome. Travis, didn't you actually beat Keith Conroy round five of 2021 Masters? Uh, no. Five. I have yet to play Keith. Okay. Um, Round five, I played, um, I didn't play this last year, but the year before when I took second, I played George O'Connell round five. Okay. Okay. And he was playing goblins. Right. So it was a goblin off. So it was a guy. Yeah. And it was very, very tight game as most <laughs> goblin against goblin games go. But yeah, I mean, goblins for sure. I played them in fantasy and obviously continue to play them now. Yeah. And you missed uh, 2022 Masters because uh, you just had a newborn. 
Yep. But I was I was very curious to what list you would have brought. Uh, if you have went, I'm sure you had a list prepared. It's just that in the end yeah. you did not go. So it, maybe it we'll very, go very similar to yeah my usual goblin list that I've been bringing the last couple of years and doing well with. Because if it's doing well, why why totally change it? Awesome. Thank you, Travis. So last up is myself. For those who have not uh, known me very well, I'm Paige and I'm from a small little island country called Singapore. It's on the southern tip of the Asian <laughs> peninsula. And our country is very densely packed. It's about as densely packed as New York City. And last year, it won <laughs> an award that I'm not proud of, but it's the most expensive city to live in. <laughs> yeah, so... It's quite a metropolitan city over here, but high cost of living and all. So I do play Kings of War. I actually started when I was 25 years old, 11 years back, uh, only when I started working because Warhammer, or rather this hobby is quite expensive, right? So I, I did play Magic back in the day and I started Warhammer uh, in 2012. That was already 8th edition. I played a year of it, I didn't like it. I moved on to War Hordes, War Machine and Hordes. Played three years of that, pretty hardcore. And But by the end of it, I was a bit burnt out because there's a very sh strong complexity creep in War Hordes. So I remembered, I uh, heard about Kings of War when uh, by then fantasy has blown up. So I've heard about Kings of War. So I went back into King Kings of War and has have been at it ever since for seven years. Being in Singapore, our community is quite small. And so you'll see me in my battle reports playing a lot of UB so that I have exposure and be able to play against players internationally. And I do have, I do play by email quite often as well. If you don't know what that means, it's basically playing asynchronously. I take my turn, I save the game, and the opponent can take his turn whenever he wants and save the game. And so we just pass the game back and forth like that. If you are interested in how to do it, I did make a recent video of how to do it on my YouTube channel. Okay, so with that, I have a panel of experts here. But before we dive into uh, the Goblin Army review, let's go around again and just uh, update, our, update everybody about our hobby, what we're going through in our hobby right now. So Steve, any ho hobby updates for you? I am about four weeks out from... The Pilgrimage GT, which is uh, taking place in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Um, the TO, uh, Marcelo Ruco, is actually flying in Jeff Trache and uh, another Australian player to the tournament. So it'll be cool to perhaps get some games in against some Austra actual Australian players. Um, so I like painting hobby wise, I have four night goblins i need to paint to finish up the my last regiment for my army but um after that i'm just gonna be worried about getting reps in on ub or reps in and in person with some club mates um and beyond that i really don't have any hobby goals for the rest of the year right well yeah that's very exciting able to play australian players in person well if yeah. you don't get matched up against them maybe you could uh uh, get private message them to get a private game in instead of uh, hoping that you meet them in the tournament. Yeah, uh, if, if I hope if I'm playing Jeff, it's going to be on the top table of round five, but yeah, it's not going to happen. Yeah, yeah. All right. So next, Kyle, what you've been up to? Um, it's been goblins. So like I said, I'm <clears throat> I'm down to less than three hundred unbuilt goblins, and I have less than a hundred savage orcs left. So I'm knocking those out. Um, I'm on my third goblin army for people counting. I have my dinosaur goblins, my Lord of the Rings goblin town goblins, and I have my night goblin goblins. Um, and on the same token, I am almost finished with my orc armada fleet. I hope to get that done this month. Mm -hmm. It's uh, just over a thousand points of armada. And then I just finished building my 3,000th point of marauder firefight so i'm sort of juggling between three different green skin armies and just trying to reduce my pile of shame well how much I have an opportunity kyle <laughs> no it's shame 
it's changed. Some of these boxes have been in here since I was in high school. I was wondering, like, point, it's changed. I've, I've been wondering, why do you have 300 goblins to paint when you have been playing goblins since four years old? But well, now that answers it, the... you have three different armies of goblins. Yeah, well, that doesn't include the Noblars or, like, all the boxes of metal Ralpartha and Grenadier orcs and goblins. We don't get into those. This is just on sprue <laughs> GW and Mantic stuff. But, no, basically, if I'm going to build an army, I make it way too big. So that's what I'm after. Right. How much is 1,000 points of Armada? How big is an Armada um, game typically? About five fleets. Right. So I, I have enough I have enough armada ships to field five legal lists simultaneously mm-hmm. and then firefight uh, about a thousand to fifteen hundred as normal and I have three thousand points. Mm-hmm. And then I have <clears throat> enough goblins that it's not worth worrying about. And then my Lord of the Rings army, just the Goblin Town goblins is twelve rabble regiments. Wow. <laughs> So, that is a lot. Yeah. I mean, it's cool, right? It's cute. Goblins are cute. What can I say? I'm Goblins a, I'm in your blood. And Travis, what are you up to? So, kind of like Kyle, I'm kind of have a, a ton of stuff. I'm redoing all of my um, Warhammer Goblins into Mantic Goblins uh, currently. Um, I'm getting Armada finished up for Adepticon in the next month. Um, I'm getting my Marauders done for Adepticon in the next month. So kind of working on that stuff, finishing up painting the Northern Alliance for Adepticon. Um, and then basically just getting hobby stuff ready for Masters this summer, um, tables, that kind of stuff. So not as and much as Kyle. You're going to be running Northern Alliance? Yep, I'll be running Northern Alliance. I started this uh, last year, June. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was meant just for Kings of Memphis because he had a special character that gave out Rally. Um, so I took the Thane with the Rally banner and um, basically just put Rally around Huskarls and Dwarves. Um, right. And then it did well. Uh, I did well. I got best general at that one. Um, it was a good list, man. And uh, I beat Kyle, barely. Shouldn't have. Kyle made a, a bonehead move. Left the door open and I took it. <laughs> and I... I... Just to sidetrack a little bit, I saw your game against Adam Ballard. I don't know which tournament was that, but yeah, that was uh, Kings of Winter, um, in January. I think the scenario was dominate or something like that. It was uh, it was a modified dominate control. They uh, right. It was three center boxes sections. in the center, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, it was pretty good. I actually enjoyed it uh, a lot more than regular dominate or regular control. Um, the terrain really kind of screwed me in the end. Um, from what we Adam and I went back and forth talking about later on and rewatching the game. Um, the buildings yeah. where they the buildings where they were kind of located really hurt my setup. Um, and it was real gentle to Adams based on mm-hmm. the side, but that's all right. Yeah, I noticed uh because your Haskells uh, pushed up uh behind a wall of dwarfs and that kind of slowed down your advance and he was able to keep you out of the zone yeah all right so if you're interested you can watch out uh, for that battle in adam's channel it's called master site youtube Ma- master site yeah adam's youtube channel awesome so for myself i have just started assembling my goblin army so i have assembled crony snark and i've Woo. assembled a mixture of 60 goblins and rats for the rebel hordes because uh my, my idea is I'm gonna mix uh goblins and rats together. Um mostly goblins but with a sprinkling of rats because if I were to ever make a mantic ratkin army, I don't want to redo four hordes, so I'm just gonna use them. So that's uh my 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 ingenious idea to uh double use these uh four to six hordes of uh, infantry that I'm going to do for my goblins. You can play goblins and rats almost exactly the same page, so no <laughs> one would really notice. <laughs> the interesting thing is because I do have a ratkin army, but it's uh, it's GW, so so I'm not sure if I'm going to ever do a mantic uh, ratkin army, but I'm just uh, future-proving. You know, This is my seventh army 
that I'm working on. That's what you get for building multiple armies instead of just making one army bigger forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's right. Some of my armies, I only have like one list built and then I'm like, got sick of it and I moved on. All right. With that, let's move on to our Goblins army review proper. So I'd like uh, someone to give an introduction on why we should play Goblins. I think Carl is the most suitable person to to give that introduction. So Carl, it's quick elevator pitch. Why should we play Goblins? Uh, financially, you should not. <laughs> <laughs> Outside of that, Goblins bring you all the flexibility of Kings of Men with the utility of Ratkin, the staying power of a wet paper bag, and the emotional damage of my childhood. They're, they sprinkle all the right flavors, all the right seasoning. You can play them however you want. You've got Alpha Strike, only Tar Pit, only Chaff. They have some of the most point-efficient hammers in the game. They have Slashers. They didn't need Slashers. They have Flyers. They didn't need Flyers. They have Granny mm -hmm. Snark. Um, they have the most cost-effective Wizards for some reason and the best Banner Bearer for its points. Mm -hmm. It's sort of just, if you don't like yourself and you're not worried about going broke, you can do a lot of things with goblins and have a lot of fun. Because at the end of the day, the army itself isn't actually good. You have to understand how to use it. So it's also got a decent skill requirement to get really good. But a brand new player can go two and two or two and three or three and two right out the gate just by the nature of how many drops you have. So it's, it's fun to start and hard to master. And that's what I want out of a war game. Awesome. Steve, you have anything to add on to that? Yeah, it's it's really liberating to not care about any of your army. Like, it's all chat. Yeah, it all dies, and I, I don't care. Like, I, I remember I played a game against a clubmate, uh, Jake Karapika, and he ever at his house. And he had like a zombie dragon or a vampire and zombie dragon in my rear. And he looked really proud of himself. I'm like, all right, you could charge. I don't care. You could charge anything. That's cool. I thought, I don't care. And, he, and just that look at his face is like, oh, <laughs> just the just the, the sadness of if this was any other army, he'd be in a really, really good position. And this army, uh, I'm good shit. Yeah, Good just liberating, not to have high expectations for what your stuff does. Yeah, just just adding on to that, Steve, because I am uh, quite new into Goblins, but I do have about 10 games under my belt so far. But before Goblins, I've always played uh, elite alpha striking armies. I just found that that was very to my play style. I like to set up, uh, I like to set up the, the problem and see how my opponent answers. And with that, I also like to charge first. I detest getting charged first. So it's quite a huge mental pivot for me to play goblins. But that is uh, one of the reasons why I wanted to play goblins because it's a completely different play style. And yes, things just die. And it's a little bit liberating that, you know, I used to play elite armies and like a lucky nerf roll takes takes out my 250 point hammer. I'm like, ah, raging, oh, raging about it. But in goblins, like, it's okay. I still have two. I will always still have tools as long as I have pieces on the board. So that feels uh, very different. And uh, to shout out to my local player, Rod Roderick, he says, the superpower of goblins is that it's cheap. Everything is cheap. <laughs> so that's uh, that's the reason to play goblins. Travis, you have anything to add on? No, nah, basically, yeah. Everything's cheap. You get all the toys to play with. Uh, it's just a matter of how you utilize them. So with that, we'll go into a unit-by-unit unit review. I think uh, the starting point is to start off with Rebel. They come in Regiment, Hordes, and Legions. And I think the most common configuration you'll see them will be in Hordes and sometimes Rebel, uh, in Regiments if you are lacking the points. But I'm looking at the Legion. It doesn't seem very worth it. It's just a slight bump in nerf, but a lot higher in cost. But yeah, Rebel is, are your basic troopers, 25 attacks, uh, they're hitting on 5s, but they have a good amount of nerf, 1921, and they are defense 4, so they're not as easy to take out. And the key thing is they're really cheap, 125 points for the horde, and you unlock, uh, you get a horde unlock, right? Infantry horde unlock. You have one war engine, one monster, and one hero, and you need all three unlocks 
in a goblin army. So that's the reason why you will see uh, the rebel horde very often. And sometimes regiments. And I've not run regiments before. So uh, Steve, would you like to talk a little bit about running regiments? Yeah, regiments are actually are a value. They're 75 points. Um, 12, 14 are with defense wars surprisingly uh, stable. Like uh, you, you get, or um, the, they're going to hang around, you know, so that it's going it's to take a lot more than 75 points to move them in one turn. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, they're, they're good, you know, good, they're, they're cheap enough that you, and you're, that they could, in like control, you could just, Put them in a corner and leave them alone for the entire game, and they're just scoring a point. Um, but they're also you know, great getting in the way, and then you know, like you want to put them in front of something that's going to die really easy, that you want to die really easy. So like your sharp dispensers could charge the next turn. They're they're good for that too. So yeah, I, I like the uh, I like the regiments. Yeah, and yeah, that's why you run the regiment. And I'll just go back to the horde so the cool thing about these rebel is uh a lot of ch- a lot of uh crappy units are defense three but the rebel is defense four so they take a little bit of effort to take out and especially for the horde 1921 nerf for 125 points one hammer unit is not going to take it out so you'll you'll see that the opponent will often be forced to send two hammer units and that's where you start getting value because you're gonna counter attack you're gonna yeah, you're going to counter that uh, on your terms and you'll be able to take out one uh, or if not both the hammers and you'll profit from that trade. Yep, uh, not much else to say. They are able to take more pups, but uh, I don't think anyone buys the more pup because it's 10 points. Don't, but if you have the more pup launchers, you can load them up, which don't we'll get to. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't pay, pay points for more pup. One of the most important pieces for the horde geometry in goblins, obviously we haven't got to the units yet, but because they're eight inches across, it allows you to space three 50 mil bases behind it with an individual on a 20 in between mm-hmm. and be completely screen. So you can field three war trombones and two bangets or a bangit and a wizard and mm-hmm. still be completely screened <clears throat> from deployment. You can deploy them in the front and then double time the horde over it. Or if the enemy is shooting, you can deploy the horde in the front and put that behind. So you can effectively meat shield all of your actual useful stuff because yep. it's eight inches across. Yeah, it's a great meat shield. Uh, but you also, if you have uh, something melee to behind the rebel, to be uh, wary of the opponent not killing the rebel and just jamming it up, and then your hammer gets stuck behind. So I think we'll talk more about that uh, later on when we go on to the tips. But with that, let's move on to sharp sticks. They are your spear version of your rebel and it's very sad because nobody really takes them because at the end of the day they are still unit strength 2, 3 and 4 for the regiment, horde and legion uh, respectively, they do not have one unit strength bump over the rebel and they do cost uh, quite a significant bit more, the horde is 30 points more expensive and so I don't see them on the table right um I'd just like to tap on the opinions of the, our, our experts over here. Is it viable to take one or two hordes of sharp sticks to against cavalry? I would say if you're going to take them, you take a regiment just to have. Um, and they're only going to be used for, you know, taking a hit from cav or flyers. Mm-hmm. But I don't think you take a horde. Right. No, I do like as a meme. A sharp stick legion with the crystal pendant has been a staple since first, like the very beginning of second edition. Just here's a huge block of nerve with pokey sticks. And when you finally commit enough stuff to kill it, it blows up on you. Mm-hmm. Um, but I do believe the Glade Stalker meta has seen that meme truly drowned in arrows. But otherwise, it, in goblins, it's so cheap. Any point you spend has to be justified, and sharp sticks don't justify it. Right. If they were, if the regiment was unit set strength three, I would consider it. But yeah, I think the uh, the the formula for unit strength three is at least a hundred points. Um, yeah, and it's ninety five points for the regiment, just shy of that. Yeah. And I don't. Yeah, it's like spear uh, spear spikes. 
the halfling version, I think, has are 105 points and they're unit strength three. You have skeleton and ratkin warriors, all the other like cheap spear units. The regiments are unit strength three, but they're all over 100 points. So, right. If, they, if they're unit strength three, I would, I'd set up taking. I, mean, I don't know. I'd have, I'd have five points, but I would consider <laughs> taking regiments of them if they're units. Yeah. Three. But would would you pay for them if they cost five points more, just for yeah. the same stat line but unit strength three? Yeah, unit strength is maybe so right. valuable because you just put a regiment behind a building in a corner, and there you go. I've got unit strength three for control. Right. Yeah, and uh, I think if you were to take one horde of sharp sticks then the opponent will just charge something else, right? Because their cavalry, they charge 16 inches, they'll just charge the rebel next to it rather than to charge your sharp sticks. And if you were to swap all your rebel into sharp sticks, that is a lot more points, which is not justifiable. And that's why people don't take sharp sticks. All right, let's move on to sticking to the team of melee. Let's talk about the Lugget Gang. They are available in uh, troop and regiment sizes, and you can take a legendary version of them in the hot size, which also means you can't take items on the hot, right? So um, I think Steve has some experience with luggage. Would you like to give luggage an yeah, introduction? Um, I've taken the luggage horde before and earlier in second or earlier in third edition, I did like out of, out of the box third edition. Mm -hmm. they, uh, I, I tried luggage. They're, they're fighting both of the, the troop and regiment. They're, they're an interesting take. Um, you get a lot of attacks on, on pretty much a berserker level of attacks, mm -hmm. and their defense four, which is different for a berserker. Um, but yeah, they're they're a second line troop. You're not gonna they're gonna be hiding. You know, they're gonna be the melee threat behind the rebel regiments. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the thing with the with the horde, you can't that it really it's expensive for two forty five. Mm -hmm. um, and you can't take an item with them, mm -hmm. but or it's still it's still an interesting take because uh, it's going to strike four dash right. twenty two with defense four is kind of hard to to move, but yeah, um, yeah, there's still uh, you know and uh, with the way the meta is now, I really wouldn't take them, but um, they're they're still fun. Yeah, I mean you can get shot to bits, right? That just about as hardy as rebel yeah. so they can get shot to bits so if you bring a horde uh, bring a horde as a second line is a little bit uh, expensive and unwieldy and yeah the regiment might be viable as a second line or even the troop uh, they are fearless and they have brutal crushing strength one hitting on force uh, Carl do you have uh, any experience with the luggage? yeah um, I made a video last year where I said luggets were garbage. I uh -huh. stand by most of that. <laughs> um, I have found a lot of success with luggage troops because the way their profile, like geometry works, they're able to fit in a lot of flanks. Mm -hmm. They're cheap enough to second line really well, and they're fearless. So it's really hard to stop up your second line with like a height three lightning bolt poke that does a wound and rolls hot on nerve mm -hmm. to waver them. Um, I don't like the regiment at all. If you're buying it for unlocks, boy, you could have bought rabble. If you're buying it for damage, mm. there's a lot of things in the game that are better than a, a luggage regiment. I do like the horde. Um, a lot of times when I run the horde, I don't end up even fighting with it. The threat of it holds board space. People ignore it. And for 245 points, I bought a objective. Because it's projecting enough threat. And if you want to use it as a hammer, you have to second line it. It just takes the place of another unit like a mincer. And mm -hmm. at that point, you could have bought a mincer. Right. But the troop is interesting because it fits. Right. All right. Interesting. Travis, what about any any opinions on the luggage? So, yeah, when I was messing around with them, I used them. I only use troops and I'd use one or two of them or three of them. And they would literally, when I was messing around with trolls, they would just be behind the trolls. So they wouldn't get shot. Um, they have the brutal to throw in that trolls are missing. Um, when you can, you know, double charge if you lose one um, and then getting flanks and things. Um, but yeah, I definitely wouldn't take regiments of them. And 
the horde. I, I don't like it just because it is unwieldy, and I can, if I want a horde to get ran into, I would just take a rabble horde. Right. If you put the troops behind the trolls, wouldn't they be unable to see past the trolls? So their goal is they're alternating, so the trolls, when they die, they fly in. Right. So you have to wait for the so, trolls to die. Right. But for, you know, 105 points of combat, that is a threat behind trolls that already are a threat. They, they do all right. In this uh, podcast, there's going to be a lot of wait for the front line to die, then have fun. Yeah. yeah. And if that's not how you like to play, goblins, goblins are going to be a tough match for you. Spitters, I'm not sure if this might be a debatable unit, but yeah. I don't really see them often. So they are the shooty goblins, but they do hit on fives with your standard 10 or 20 attacks for the regiment and horde respectively. They do suffer a point less in unit strength, so the horde is only 3 unit strength. Their bows are 24 inches, but they don't have steady aim. They're hitting on fives, so they're not very accurate at all. And Last of all, they are irregular, so they don't provide any unlocks. So uh, have any of you used Spitters? Yeah, I've used them a lot. I play against Jeff O'Neill in his region. He uses them a lot. Eric Trowbridge has some lists that have them. I'll summarize them in really succinct fashion, and I'll quote Eric Trowbridge. They do just enough damage to be annoying. They're too cheap to matter. And if Glade Stalkers want to shoot you off, you're winning the points battle. Right. That's my take on spitters. Yeah. But yeah, do you probably. often find difficulty taking them because they don't unlock? So, Oh, yeah. No, I don't take spitters at all. Melee goblins mm-hmm. are where it's at. But if you're going to take spitters, they're so bad, they're good. <laughs> Especially if you take a lot of them. I know Jared Holcomb in uh, Wichita here, he likes to take lots of spitters and rabbles. I think he runs five spitter hordes. In mm-hmm. like- One infantry horde buys you four archer hordes. You can do a lot of damage with 80 shots on fives. You know, yeah. And that's what he does. Um, he does, I mean, he does well. I mean, I had to play him, not quite top table, but what, you know, game five of Kings of Winter this, with the, this last tournament I went to. And I mean, he would, he went, I think, three and two. From second to third edition, they, they got double hit because they went from being, they, they were, were regular in se- at the end of second edition yeah. because of, unlocking issues um you can thank jeff for that uh but they were still cheap i, I think there were like 80 they're like 85 points for a regiment and 135 for a horde so they're really cheap and now they're 90 and 160 so it's they got double hit from just being irregular and also a pretty significant points hike um so yeah, i haven't taken them in third edition i think players some players still find success with them the thing about goblins is that your shooty options, other than the spitters, they are all like uh, fun little toys, which has quality attacks, but not high volume. So if you need a high volume of shitty attacks just to take out things with uh, like low defense and high enough, uh, this might just be the tool for that purpose, which uh, the rest of the goblin army doesn't have. Right, and you can shoot it off at far range, 24 inches, pretty far compared to a lot of the goblin toys shooting at 12 inches. Right, so with that, let's move on to trolls. So they are like your most generic ever large infantry unit. And yeah, they are 190 points for a hot that's uh, pretty cheap, 18 attacks, hitting on 4, crushing 2, regen 5+, plus, and they do suffer the troll nerf problem of 14 slash 17. But they are still defense 5. So what do you guys think of the trolls? Spirit list that, that I'll share in a little bit. I'm actually running two hordes of trolls. You know what you're going to get out of them. Um, right. And combat, you know, they're, they're hitting on four, so the swing is going to be there. I mean, well, they can go nuts and do 11 damage, or they can, you know, flub and mm. do two. Uh, but you're going to, you know, you can, against defense five, you're going to do six wounds. or, or but, their, their In that region, um, yeah. And and then they also regen, and then they're, you know, it's a it's a, a lot of punch in a um in a small footprint. Yeah, they're they're fine. I mean, there's you know, I know other people like a lot of other goblin players don't take trolls just because they're 190 points and just what I'm I'm trying them out. I really like the models I have for my trolls. I have the GW Trogoths or whatever they're called. Mm. They they look cool. So I'm gonna run them, see how it works. I've seen you um 
move in and out of trolls. So I've played you in different iterations of goblins. So you have run trolls and then you took that out. And I guess now you have put them back in. Yeah, I put it back in. Right. For myself, my list that I'm going to share later on, I do run a horde of trolls. The trolls are a little basic because they cost little, but they lack all the interesting rules that most other large infantry hordes have. So I, I think we wouldn't have mind we, we, we wouldn't mind paying a bit more points if they have some better rules. But this is what we got, right? And it's still decent being uh, able to pack a decent melee punch with crushing two. If you need a decent melee punch and they are unlocking and the horde will unlock two unlocks, right? Two two uh yeah, two units. Uh, compared to the luggage, the regiment is uh, just 30 points cheaper at 160, but it only un unlocks one, right? So that's uh, probably the reason why you want to take trolls if you do. And one of the reasons why I'm taking trolls is because um, I don't want to paint that many rebel hordes. So for my first, first iteration of uh, building up my goblins, I'm capping it at four hordes of rebel. So in order to have the unlocks, I'm taking it. Uh, one troll horde which has been to decent uh, success for myself because you do um, have a bit of a can opener there Mike Grant out of uh, Cali takes one horde and he kids them out because they're only 190 points if you don't look at them as a goblin unit 190 mm -hmm. points for a nice unit you throw a magic item on them and all of a sudden they're like 220 to 240 or even 250 I mean, a lot of other armies pay that for 18 good attacks, right? So if you throw a Brew of Sharpness on them or Elite and use them as a blender, there is, he's had a lot of success using, using like one buffed up horde as a blender unit. Um, I don't know if it's better or not, but it certainly works. Mm -hmm. So it's not that trolls are a throwaway. They have lots of uses of screening. Um, I don't think the regiments are any good. There, there's, I'm sure there's play, but... Don't look at a uh, naked trolls are cool because we have Jarrus pendant, so trolls are usable. But a horde, one or two hordes kitted out as hammers. I yeah. mean, you can do a lot of damage with a melee three up troll horde, right? For sure, yeah. So there's, um, there's play there. One thing about their footprint is that because they're large infantry, 120 by 80. And one issue I do have with that is that when you put them behind the rebel a rebel horde even if you pushed it off to one side of the rebel horde uh, if the rebels survive your trolls still can't double charge into whatever that's uh, fighting the rebel that's the that's one problem that I find so the troll as a, the trolls as a second line will only come into play when the rebel in front dies the rebel horde that is if it's a regiment then uh, there might be a possibility but that's one issue I have with the 120 with, which is also a similar problem I have with the minces. Oh yeah, they have a new rule since uh, the Big Red Book. They have a dead packs, which uh, I'm running in my list, but it has not detonated on me yet. So I'm not sure how good it is because it does uh, friendly fire damage. So this rule, and it's free. This, this additional rule, it's a legendary upgrade, a limited upgrade rather. You can only take it on one horde. But what happens is when this unit dies, okay, it explodes. So both friendly and enemy units within six inch takes a D6 plus one hits at piercing one. And it is uh, so everything within six inches, friendly or enemy gets hit. No nerf tests are required. Okay. So what do you guys think of this rule? It's fun. It's goblin y. <laughs> it's cute. It replaces it's, it's, the old if you got blasters. one, you might as well. Why not? Yeah. 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 At first, I didn't take it. Then, uh, my local uh player Rod, because when I looked at it, I'm like the opponent gets to choose when he kills the trolls and blow it up. So that means he gets to decide when it uh blows up with maximum uh impact on yourself on on the goblin player. So I'm like, it feels more of a negative than a positive, right? Uh, but my local player Roderick says. No, you're goblins. It doesn't matter if your things take damage. As long as you can chip in more wounds on the opponent, especially the unit that just routed you, and then you just blast it off with shooting, right? Because 
uh, with goblins, what happens in the end game is that sometimes you have a lot of wounded stuff, but the opponent has run out of steam, run out of units that can put damage or cause a nerf check, and it doesn't matter if your stuff are wounded. So, um, have they fixed it so that you can't also take crystal pendant on that unit, or can you still do both? I have no idea. Uh, I, does it say that you can't? Because when it first came out, that was really fun to do and double blow up people. Oh, it's been eroded yeah, that you can't do it. I think they eroded it to where that you can take both. I, I don't know if you can or not. Um, the cool thing about that unit is you basically built yourself a berserker, right? Its job now is to drive forward as fast as possible and gunk up the enemy works for a turn, blow up while the rest of your army gets into place. So if you're going to take a set of trolls, man, put mm. that on a bit. It's literally free. Like If you're going to take the trolls, I, I think you'd be silly to not take it. Right. Okay, so I'll report back with uh, how it does for me, whether it blows up in my face. Uh, I've tried on the companion app. It seems like I can add the crystal pendant. I'm not sure it's because it's not been updated, but um, I yeah, think they, they've got it for for all of the units that can do that. They have uh, they've eroded to say you can't take crystal pendant as well. That's no fun. <laughs> oh well. Next up, fleabag riders. These are your. Fast cap, they do have Nimble, Tundras 1, and Vicious Melee. They have less attacks, 7, 7 14, and 28, uh, respectively. They are Melee 4 and Defense 4. They are Cavalry, so the Regiment and Hordes do unlock. I have not run them uh, at all. And of course, they are also available in the formation. So maybe we'll talk about them together. The formation <laughs> runs, um, let's see, two Regiments of uh, Fleabag Riders and a king on fleabag. The king gives an elite aura to them. All the units have a special rule that if they roll 6 to hit, it, causes, it adds an additional hit. Basically, it becomes blast 2 if you roll a 6, but you also deal yourself 1 damage. So that's how the formation works. Anyone have run the formation or the fleabag riders, Vanilla? Yeah, I think we've yeah, all run uh, the formation. Yeah, the I have not run it. <laughs> The four bases is a lot of fun. It's it's not very good, but it's super fun to play. Like you're you're gonna do a lot of damage to yourself, and mm. you know, I've devastate. You're gonna devastate yourself one once or twice. But there's speed. Tw there's speed ten nimble, so you can get in a lot of fun places. And a lot of times you're just you don't even charge with them. You can just keep threatening and running around the running around the rear. If you, they you know, making your opponent either react to them, if they don't, don't react to them, cool. I'm gonna get a rear charge. Um, yeah. There, yes, and and the with the formation, you're 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 up to thunderous too. So it hurts. Like if you if you if you spike if your four spike the right way, it, they'll 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 do some they'll do some damage, devastate themselves in the in the process. But you know, it's all, it's all fun. Yeah, the formation is really fun. Um, outside of the formation, Travis will have some opinions too. I think it's the same as mine from last time we talked, but I like a flea bag troop because you got a speed 20 screening unit. If it can somehow find a rear charge on like turn four, then it was worth it. It plays the mission really well. Um, but I love like a single flea bag troop to screen and just to, to put pressure against other flyers. If I have extra points, I throw meat of madness on them because there's not a lot in goblins actually worth putting items on. So you sometimes wind up with points you have to burn. Um, I do not like the non-formation regiments and hordes. I know there's a lot of play with it. Like Ron Rishi out of Florida has an all-cav army that he does really well with, but I do not have the skills to figure it out. Ron's out of uh, the great cons out of uh, New England. No, he's out of Florida, homie. He moved. Hate to break it to you. <laughs> uh, he moved on. Okay. <laughs> he's, he's, he's abandoned the North. Travis, I'd like to hear your thoughts. So I... I, I've run it all, all cav lists basically before. Um, done very well with it. Um, it definitely has a skill gap though, because um, obviously, you know, your everything in this list hits on fours if you're doing all cav. Um, it's all defense four. It's very, very squishy. Um, very low nerve. And very low nerve. Yes, thank you. Um, you know, my list that with that when I was running flea bags. I mean, I ran a couple of tournaments last year with it. Um, I, I always had at least one horde, um, a 
couple extra regiments just to lose. Um, but you know, like Kyle was saying, troops are great. Um, I love the troops because honestly, I take my, I love mop up launchers. We'll talk about them later. Um, but you can load mop ups for an extra six, six attacks, uh, that always hit on four plus crush one. So, I mean, you're, you're, uh, you can easily augment your flea bag riders. Um, and you know, you treat them as little tiny missiles that just go out into whatever you want. Um, and you just load them left and right. Uh, you can load the formation as well for extra damage, um, which makes them even better. Um, no, I, I have a soft, I have a love spot for my the all cav list. It's real tough though. I mean, if you start losing stuff, you lose it. So, uh, it's not an often top table list, but it's fun. Yeah, I, you don't it, see very many people run it just because it is really hard. It's not the consistency is not there. My consistency with the goblins with the flea bags are great. A lot of it is it's an alpha. You're trying to play an alpha list with the defense four army, right? Um, so you know you got to take out the mindset that you want to strike first right away. Turn three charges, it's okay. You're throwing threat the whole time. You, you know, turn three, turn four is when you charge, not turn two, right? Because um, you can't win the grind. Speaking of which, I do uh, have a video about alpha striking armies, and my general. Uh, advice is to charge on turn three never to charge on turn two and yeah speaking of the flea back riders their nerf is uh 13 15 defense four so th at the regiment level right so they can really be taken out or wavered very easily and that's uh, one of the weaknesses so i did uh, watch steve hugh drew in his uh tournament battle report where he took the formation so one regiment got shot up uh, and it presents a target, right? Because most of the time, goblins, you have a lot of things that you don't mind losing and you just don't care. And if you only just bring a few units of flea bags, riders, and then it suddenly it presents a target for the opponent. I'm going to take this out first. And very often they do, right? If, especially if they have some shooting. So what happened in that game, the ogres uh, shot and wavered one regiment. The other regiment charged and did not kill. But because of the exploding sticks, they dealt some damage to it themselves. So with that, it made it much easier for the opponents to take it out and I think it was just an ogre sergeant that took out a whole regiment of uh, flea back riders and then the other regiment was shot to be wavered and then uh, a, another round of shooting took it out so if you if you run your traditional goblins list and you just run one formation or just a few regiment of uh, flea backs I think they present an easy target for the opponent to concentrate on and take out uh, very easily before you even had much success with them. That's uh, that's my take on it. With that, let's move on to the Fleabag Rider Sniffs. These are the shooting version of your Fast Cavalry. Uh, they have changed to become irregular, I think, in second edition. Adam Padley. Adam Padley, yes. Adam Padley ran a lot of uh, Fleabag Rider Sniffs to great success, and that's uh, led to them getting nerfed. Have any of you run this? I've not run them before. Uh, they're like a really cool discount silver breeze that you also can't rely on. Like you can rely on silver breeze. <laughs> so a regiment of them is fun. Like you, you know, throw fire roll on them or whatever. D they play the mission, their score, right? They still have a lot of unit strength and they are still speed 10. So if you look at the hammer cavalry, hammer, I say in air quotes, if you look at the light cab, their job mm -hmm. is to go in, find flanks and be annoying. Um, if I bring a sniff regiment, my usual game plan is how can it be alive on turn six and still try and be annoying? Right. And I use them to play the mission. But I don't right. think they, they're amazing. They do suffer a drop in nerf and defense compared to the Fleabag Riders. So it's a little bit harder to keep them alive, especially if their opponent has any shooting threats. Yeah, I didn't say it was a good plan, Paige. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Mobby's pack. Um, what's interesting about well, this is that uh, they come in troop and regiments. Uh, they have they are irregular, but there is a, a limited or legendary versions of it called the Mag ones. They are a slightly beefier, uh, a, a more souped up version. Is that it? I'm I'm trying to see what's yeah, the difference. Yeah, it's the Mag ones. It's a it's an upgrade. They become defense four, and they become unlocking for a, a nominal price increase. For 10 yeah, points, yep. So, yeah, defense increase 10 points more and they become an unlocking unit, but they can't take items, of course. So, I've seen people take them, uh, especially because the Mag ones, because they do provide an unlock which goblins really crave. 
Um, anyone have any experience with them? That's all, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I run them. I run the. I'm going to use a bad word page. I run the heck out of them. Um, I run them in troops. Uh, me and Eric used to run them in regiments back in the day, but in the current meta, the 12 attacks as a regiment really doesn't add up the way it used to. Mm -hmm. um, if you're going to run a lot of mincers, I actually love using mob beasts at mob beast troops. If they have shooting, you put the mob beasts behind the mincers. If they have melee units, you put the mob beasts in front. So they're a really neat, very cost-effective screening unit. Um, they serve a similar role to the flea bag troop. They score. Uh, the Mog Wins Regiment, I take a lot of the time. If I have a few extra points, I can replace a Rabble Regiment with the Mog Wins and get this really neat Chaff Killer Objective Holder. They have a lot of unit strength for their price. Mm -hmm. um, and 12 attacks on three is vicious and crushing. crushing one. When you find a flank because they're nimble, they can, they can pick up some units. So point for point, I think the Legendary one at least swings above its weight. Uh, the troops are really just there because they they're die chaff. fast they're fast chaff. and oh. they're cheap. Right. But that's my take on them. I, I think you should have any goblin player should own at least four troops and a regiment. <laughs> I, I think you would I think you'd recommend every goblin player to have every single unit on this list. <laughs> no, there's some there's some units that you don't, got them don't all. Like. still still getting put together too. We got beach. <laughs> Yeah, no, there's some units you don't need. Uh, when we get to the ramming speed, wing it. You can skip it. <laughs> yeah, another interesting thing is their speed 6 with wild charge D3. So they threaten up to 15. So they do have that threat bubble that you can uh, cause the opponent to move up a little bit more cautiously. So with that, let's move on to Fleabag Chariots. They're your chariots uh, with a Thunderous 2, but they do hit on 4s, Vicious and Melee, and they do have bow attacks, which are significantly less half the number of shots compared to melee attacks have a rich attack value of five as well so really poor shots i don't see a reason to run them do any of you see a reason to run them well before we worse. get into chariots you you reveal yourself as an elite player page because you keep saying hit on fours like it's a bad thing and i'm over <laughs> here like it's one of our best <laughs> melee units what are you talking about remember he he played alpha before remember so <laughs> something from green lady <laughs> yeah. And yeah, you hit on threes. Yeah, but I'm talking more about the the range value is hitting on five, which is pretty bad. Yeah, it's steady aim. Yeah. Um, so the nice, the nice actually, thing now is they unlock it. Right. You're right. They went back to unlocking, but it's still not enough, in my opinion. Um, have any of you guys played with the chariot troop yet? Not the chariot troop, the Vincer troop. It's yes, but... speed nine. It goes vroom vroom and hit good for goblin. It's cheap and small. So you take a chariot troop with that little uh, skirmisher item thing, and you can you can zoom across the board with those attacks. Why don't you just take a king on chariot then? I didn't say it was a good plan. <laughs> but we're trying to make we're trying to say if this unit had a use, how would you use it? I Leave thought, I thought we were wrong. just saying if they, they suck, they suck and move on. Oh well, hey, yeah. they suck. Right now, right now, <laughs> all right. Matt, Matt Carmack and I did did points. Uh, now that they're unlocking again, we looked at all the other chariots in the game. The goblin ones they're need bad. to be fixed. They are they're so bad. they're badly priced for all their their their, yeah, uh, their levels. There's so, no reason they need to be 220 points for the legion. You know. uh, I in second edition, I ran two hordes, which are legions now. So they're the they're the big you know six. Right. And they were like 160, 160 points, I think. And yeah, you no. got uh, 16 shots at, you know, 16 attacks and 16 shots at hitting, uh, hitting on fives. They're great. I, I love the the chariot horde then. But going up in points, going down in the number of shots and also um, losing range in the shots. Yeah, they're you're just not. Yeah, I took them to Forge two years ago. They had a lot of nerve. Is the one thing they did have going for them. They they soaked enough damage for goblins. But man, if I didn't have chariots, I probably would have won. <laughs> just leave them at home for now. It's almost Sorry, two Shane more rabble hordes you could have had if you wanted the nerve. I would. I would have beat Jeff O'Neill, but I didn't. <laughs> 
Well, if uh, Matt Carmack, who has a fetish for chariots and the master statistician, if he says Fleabag chariot statistically sucks, I believe him. So we'll move on. <laughs> yeah. Next, uh, I think this is an interesting unit, the Mince Mob. Steve, are you able to introduce this? Unit? We can actually, we should, we can talk about the all the mincers since they're all uh, the single mincers, the, the monster choice. Monster, so, right. mincers, 90 points. It's the mincer, uh, mincers at any value are fantastic. There are mini giants where they get the d6 plus six attacks with uh, crush one, thunder one. Um, they're fearless, they have big shields, so they're uh, defense six in the front. Uh, and then the I think I'll let Kyle talk about the uh, more mincer, um, because he's more he's a lot better at running in than I am and runs a lot more mincers than I do, but um. The staple of all, most of my list is the Mincer Regiment with the Brewer Sharpness. So 235 points. You know, hitting on threes, Crush One, Thunder One with D6 was 21 attacks. That's defense six and fearless. Mincers are great. I like I said, at all at all levels, mincers are great. That's the standard mincer, and then everything else is just a discount mincer, Steve. There you go. Which is the standard one? The the, the mincer with sharpness. Right. Oh, is is yeah, standard. Is. There's, if you look at goblin lists, if there's a mincer regiment, probably I'd say nine times out of ten, if there's just one regiment, it's got sharpness on it. I'll be the one with like all. Yeah, but you're weird, Travis. I know. No magic. Well, give us your mincer feedback. Hit it. Hit it. I love us, mincers. Man. I love them, dude. I always try to at least take a, a monster mincer if I can. I mean, those ninety points are bargain points. I mean, yeah. they've won me games with a unit strength one, and they've. They stay alive. People have to shoot them with that big shield, like even dash 11 nerve, and you go to 14, 16 for their troop and regiments. I mean, you know, they're, they act, they scare people. So, As they should. Which is I've been fun, running mincers fun because since, you're, you're playing goblins. Nothing's scary. You're right. Now, I've been, I've been running mincers since second edition, yep. like way back when, because I run dinosaurs, or at least my first goblin army for kings is dinosaurs. The mincer literally said, I'm a triceratops to me. So I've been running them maxed out since the beginning. Um, chariot bases are awesome. You can do really mean things to players with chariot bases. As far as like catching out flanks and fitting in places they thought were safe. Like Travis said, defense six makes them unreasonably durable. Uh, they're fearless, so either you're dead or you're not. Um, and that applies to all their formation, not formation, all their sizes and, and values in order. The monster is amazing. I think it's tied with the regiment. And then the troop is neat. With some of the, the withdrawal changes, the troop gains some value. But I still don't think the troop is better. I'd say either take the monsters or the regiments. Um, I mean, one of the lists I run is called Oops All Mincers. It's three mincer regiments and three mincers. And it just hits people like a brick. Uh, for 200 points, just take it, man. You can do so much stuff. And when someone says, how many attacks is that? Because they forgot. And you say 21 plus D6. It's Thunder 1, Crush 1, Brutal. Oh, and by the way, it's Fearless, so your counterattack won't kill it. Uh, it. It brings a certain hateful joy to my face. Or to their face, rather. <laughs> so, right. Mincers are good. I've run the Mincer Regiment with a Brew of Sharpness. So for 235 points, because they are paying a Regiment cost for Sharpness, uh, it's a really mean uh, fighting machine because you have uh, 21 plus D6. That's uh, an average of about 24 attacks. Hitting on trees, that will be 16 hits on Crush 1, Thunder 1, and Brutal. So, uh, and, yeah, and Brutal. So that means uh, on average, you are threatening to kill a Defense 5, 15, 17 unit in just one swing. Uh, of course, uh, dice might screw you over, but based on average, that is uh, quite a possibility of uh, what this unit can do. But what I do often find that because the regiment is uh, 150 milliliters across and 100 deep, and it's of often parked behind a horde of rebel, what the opponents will usually do is to gum up the regiment, the rebel in front, and so that your sharpness won't get in your sharpness mincers won't get into combat. And they'll just try to hold up that Reg rebel horde as long as possible without killing it. And while this got dead, your 235 points are just sitting there till like turn four, turn five, and until maybe turn six, they get one charge in, and that's that's about it. So I've been that's why the mob beast exists, Paige. Come again. That's why the mob beast troop exists. Right. And so I, I 
I'm not running Mobius troops, but I'm still uh, having my rebel in front. So I'm trying out a troop with the skirmisher boots instead. I think that would be a popular choice for the troop. For 170 points, you do have nimble, which makes you able to get into combat easier, even with the very unwieldy rebel horde in front. And with that point savings, it's exactly 65 points, which is qualifies for a trombone. Uh, for some reason, my previous list could only fit two trombones. Uh, I know it's a sin, so I managed to fit the third trombone in with that. So we'll talk more about that uh, on the lists later. The only other thing that really matters for Mincers is goblins have disproportionately cheap access to Bane Chant and Weakness. And yeah. weaknessing something targeting a defense six unit is just a real kick in the nuts. <laughs> uh, we'll move on to, we'll talk about weakness when we move on to the wizard and let's move next to the war engine so we'll start off with the big rocks thrower and I'd like to talk about this concurrently with the sharp stick thrower because the sharp stick thrower, thrower became much cheaper I think it was 75 it's now 60 and so it is uh, the big rocks thrower is 50% more expensive than the sharp stick thrower now which means for two big rocks thrower, you can actually bring three sharp stick throwers for the same points. So the big rocks thrower do have a blast D3 plus one, hitting on fives, but with indirect and piercing three. So that's for the big rocks thrower and the sharp stick thrower only blast D3 and only piercing two. It does not have uh, ignore obscure, ignores obscure, but then it is a uh, range four plus, which is better. Because the big rocks thrower only ignores some cover, but this one, even if you have cover, then you just hit on 5+, plus, which is equivalent to the big rocks thrower. It just has slightly less piercing. It doesn't have indirect. That means if things are in your face, you can still shoot at them. And if the opponent is in the clear, you are actually hitting on 4+. Plus. Uh, what do you guys think about this change and whether big rocks throwers are still viable or you see that uh, sharp stick throwers are the way to go now? I never really cared to play rock throwers. Right. Uh, hitting on fives is rough because, I mean, with the when they did the cover change and how they're doing stuff now with that, uh, you're you're almost always hitting on sixes then uh, for the things you want to shoot. Um, right. I think sharp sticks. You'll probably see more people take them now. Um, you know, fifteen points loss on the goblin list is a lot. And you know, you take three of them. That's a big deal. Um, I would, I could see sharp sticks being played more than if people played rock throwers before playing sharp sticks now. The sharp sticks because they don't ignore obscured, so you are probably hitting on fives most of the time because of how many goblins you have in front of you and stuff. Anyways, I've, I've I'd, run one sharp stick thrower because I used to run two more pop launchers, and I really need a few more points, so I downgraded a more pop launcher into a sharp stick thrower, and it's been doing decently well. And you get to hit on 4+, plus more often than you expect, because there's always some units that are in the open. And another thing is when you're shooting at monsters and titans, they usually don't get cover from the stuff in front of them. So I can shoot at them easily on 4+. plus With the reroll from the winged, uh, yeah, it's, sometimes it's a little bit more reliable than the big rock throw. Yeah, anyone else have anything to add on for the sharp stick throw and the big rock throw? If not, we'll move on to the more pop launcher. Uh... I think they should not be your first choice in the War Machine slot. Yeah, they're, they're, now, they're Jeff O'Neill runs three catapults, right? <laughs> and his, his, like, all shooting, all long range. So threat projection has value, but uh, those are probably the bottom of the four War Machines. Of course, number one would be trombones. And... Yeah, baby! <laughs> yeah. But before we move on to the trombones, let's talk about the more pub launchers, which is probably That's all Travis. in second place, right? Uh, Travis might disagree, but Travis is that's all you, buddy. Um, tell us about Steve. What Steve say? I mean, I know I, you. I, I, I'm, in the, I'm in the Kyle camp. I talked to Kyle way a lot yeah. about a goblin, so I'm, okay. I'm in the Kyle camp. I I personally love the mop up launcher. To me, it's a dual role war engine. Almost every unit you want to take has. What is it? The mop up cage? Mop up cage rule. Yep. Which gets you extra six attacks. Crush one always hits on fours. I like it because even when it can't be used for regular shooting, it can be used for something else. To me, that's awesome. It's 36 inch range. It, you know, I generally use it to kill chaff for the first two turns just to get. I, I like playing the numbers game. I have more units than you. I'm going to keep that unit tally going. You know, they're not meant to kill high, you know, defense five, defense six units, even though I've 
can't count the number of times because they hit on fours at Blast D3 that I've put a cu- the couple wounds I needed to finish off a defense five unit. But me personally, I I mean, I wouldn't say they're my number one choice over War Trombones, but I would say they definitely are up there. The kind of running theme of goblins is you're gonna you throw enough dice at anything, yeah, it's gonna die. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna roll enough dice. The variance is gonna get get you to the numbers that you need, and lop up lunchers. But you know, it, there's no piercing, but hitting on fours, blast T three or three shots, it's uh, you could you could throw a lot of dice at something, and yeah, having the the dual flexibility of giving you know your rabble horde or whatever. Fleetback Rider Troop, extra attacks is invaluable. Uh, I have some experience with the Mon Park Lamcher, and I do love them. They are a little bit costly as compared to a trombone or sharp stick thrower. So I find that now that my list only runs one, it still gives me the flexibility of the Mon Park Launcher without uh, committing too many points into it because I used to run two. Like what Travis said, three attacks with Blast D3, they are great without piercing, right? They're great at against defense 4 and 3. They do chip in a little bit of wounds on defense 5, but you don't expect them to do much, if at all, damage at all each turn. The cool thing is the mop up delivery is equivalent to shooting into combat. Because if you shoot it into a rebel horde that's in combat, and then it immediately deals the mop up uh, damage, right? So, so that makes it equivalent to shooting into combat. And it shoots into combat better because more pops are six attacks, hitting on fours and crushing one. So I just noticed, Paige, they added the indirect to that rule, though. Ah, um, I think it's already, it's, yeah, yeah. So you can't shoot because it wasn't indirect before. So now they're, I would say they're definitely not as good now. Yeah. So I find that you I figured often... your line is going to be close to you, anyways, with them. Yeah. I just, I used to love it because you could move them. You could be five, you know, right next to somebody and load them. Right. Now you don't have reload on the mop up launch unless they've FAQ'd that. So they the one cool thing was if you don't have a good shooting target, you could move right. them and still reload a friendly unit. Yes, so they were exactly. never quiet. But now exactly. with the indirect, it's a, it's worse, honestly, even without the reload put to it. But yeah, I do find that yes, there's some there are times that um Often my rebel is too close to me, twelve inches from me to shoot at them. So I tend to try to shoot at the uh, rebel hordes that's further off to the fringes. Yeah, and yeah, and I would have to deploy my more pub launchers way back, uh, closer to my deployment line, to the back edge of my table. But they do only have thirty six inch range, so you have to be wary of that as well. You have to balance, you know, being far up enough such that the thirty six inch still have a wide range of targets while far back enough that uh, you are able to load rebels that are close to you. So there's a little bit of balancing act going on there. But nonetheless, uh, it's still great. So maybe not bring three of it great, but it's still worth considering. So with that, let's move to the star player, the War Trombone. And uh, it's only 65 points compared to, uh, I think the Redkin one is 80. Or 90 points. I, I've, it's been a while since I played Ratkin. So it's a lot more expensive for the Ratkin one for the same damage output. The Ratkin one is speed 6 with Nimble. This doesn't have it. So we just have to play better, right? So, um, But it is a lot of damage in a small 65-point package. In fact, um, on the Companion app, there's the Math Hammer. If you, look, if you click on it, if you look at its damage efficiency, it's very high too. 2.5 average damage. So it's 26 point per wound it causes. And it's far higher than everything else, even the big rocks thrower. So that's uh yeah, that's uh it's double as uh, effective as the big rocks throw, in fact. So of course the biggest drawback of it is that it's only 12 inches in shooting range. So you do have to wait till turn two or three before they start shooting at stuff. And their nerf is very, very low, 8 at 8, 10. So you <laughs> are terrified of things such as Mind Fog and a little bit of Lightning Bolt that can shoot over your rebel. What do you guys think? Well, Kyle kind of alluded to it before that you can, uh, behind a rebel horde, you can fit three war trombones and then enough room for a, a character. Um, but yeah, they're just like, again, it's weighted dice. Yeah, it's, it's piercing one. You know, you're probably going to get shooting cover, but. 30 yeah you know, if you have three of them 30 shots and the with the way that you know you could still pick your you 
go unit by unit. So, yeah, you roll one at a time. And when it comes to, okay, I did enough damage to kill this thing. And when I, the other trombone's going to hit something else. Do you yeah. usually keep three of them together? Typically, yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, you, you, run them as a, you run them as a battery. And uh, my favorite thing about war trombones is they are amazing chaff. You get to that turn five, turn six, and you're like, you know what? Your night horde should charge this war trombone. And I'll just keep shooting you with the rest. Yeah, You'd be amazed how many times you chaff with a war trombone and that 300 point hammer goes, not again. Yeah, you run it, you, you move it five inches by five inches. By the end of the game, you just walk it, walk it up to the opponent's face and shoot them in the face and say, go ahead, kill me. 65 I'll points and I still have a lot more shooting to finish you off. Yeah, I like to tell people, you know, hey, you take that war trombone, I'll give you snakes and you just stare at them because they know they have no choice but to charge your war trombone with their, you know, right. night horde. So war trombones, take three of it every time if you can, right? Everybody is in agreement on that. Awesome. Next up, yeah, the Goblin Blaster. That. The explodey guy that is also in the Ogre's list. 65 points for that 3 attacks hitting on 3s, blast D6, crushing 3, and then it dies afterwards. It does have a ranged attack while it's not charging. Hitting on 5s, plus D3, piercing 1. No steady aim or ignores obscured though on the shooting attack. So the shooting attack is not amazing, but nonetheless, it's still something. Do you guys run these? There you go. Sometimes it's sixty-five points, Paige. That's it's sixty-five yeah. points. Yeah, that's. I mean, I've had goblin blasters that have done one wound and killed themselves. I've had goblin blasters that have done fourteen wounds and taken off a night horde. It's very gobliny, so I, I, I like it just for that. But there's a there's a lot of times where they're just um, kind of in the back. You know, they're a second line, and sometimes they're just uh, they're cheap enough that they could just tip, take a table quarter and just sit there. Yeah, I've I've looked at it many times and I think there's a an allure to it because there is the threat, right? There's a threat that it might deal a lot of damage. And on average it deals six damage to a defense five unit and it has brutal. So it deals a lot of damage for its package of sixty five points and people are wary wary of it. So just the the just the effect of having that threat piece there for that sixty five points and um hammers are afraid of it especially you don't want to give it flanks, it's almost guaranteed a kill if they get a flank. And yeah, and it's at the end of the day, it is a monster, so it's a scoring at unit strength one. Uh, but I see uh, Travis uh, shaking his head earlier, so I, I think your opinion differs. I I hate this unit. <laughs> I used to, I loved it better when it blew up in a radius and everyone got hit. It was way more fun. Um, oh, yeah. I, yeah, I, I don't like nice. it now. I... With the goblin arm, there's so many things that it's just all trash anyways that why would you just buy something that dies after one use? Because it doesn't matter what charge you go into. Um, and if you're up against a good opponent, they're going to give you the worst charges possible. So then you're just sitting there doing basically nothing because the shooting attack's worthless. I I personally would rather spend 65 points on a trombone if I had that points or mm. you know, find five more points for a king or so, you know something else. Uh, that can right. be used for the whole game other than one time running into something. Uh, that's just my opinion. I know a lot of people love it. They love that one time getting a flank and destroy something because um, I've seen them getting flanks of people before because they forget about it. And I mean, it pays for itself then, but I personally go a different right. route. So Travis, I think is, is right in the, the middle on how <laughs> I think about it. So it's really, really fun. But if you look at any of my competitive lists, it's not in a single one. Yeah, right. if it was that's a fun where list, I said fun it time. Out. Sure, I'll take it. But a good player is going to ignore it. Yeah. Like in casual lists, you can hide it, and people will shoot that defense five and cover, and you're like, "Ha ha, you did nothing." In a competitive list, they're like, "Yeah, cool. Here's the front. Do your do your one to five wounds, and I'll carry on with my life." Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It it really doesn't hit that much harder than a rabble horde. Right. Right. Okay, with that, let's move on to the winged. It has two options: the shooting option and the melee options. It so, two options, the correct option sure. and the wrong option. <laughs> right? As Kyle sure alluded to, two options. Nobody takes option. the ramming speed. I have tried it once, and I took it out, took it away afterwards. <laughs> I, I let Kyle try it for me, and he said no. It was. I tried it in a casual game and went, you know, I could have just not deployed it and had the same nope. result. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was our conversation. I loved it. I was just like, thank you. 
Yeah, but the shooting version is amazing. Uh, the reason the melee version was uh, created so that they can say it wasn't a nerf to the shooting option. <laughs> it was a nerf. Yeah, they, because they, was there a, was a, a there nerf was some clash of kings. That one's that was, always get nerfed. Come on. That that claimed to be no nerf. So instead they gave options. <laughs> <laughs> so uh it used to be 15, 13 15 for even the shooting wing it, but now it is a nerf eleven thirteen. So it took a two point yeah, it hit to from... its nerf for maintaining the shooting option. But the shooting option is great, right? Because you fly 10, you shoot 12 inches. Uh, it's three attacks on uh, four plus and blast. Four up, uh, ignores yeah, four. intervening, blast, vicious, all the stuff. It went from busted to really good. That's what the nerf did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It, it was it was busted before. Well, they gave it yeah. eye in the sky, you know, saying that we didn't nerf you. So yeah, it's like oh, you you saved ten points to go down two nerf. Yep. it always had eye <laughs> in the sky, didn't it? No, yeah, you had with the, oh, it was you a, had to buy yeah, eye in the sky. All right. And nobody it was, I mean, it was 130 one. for the eye in the sky, but it was a 13 15. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. What used to be amazing about it is its high nerf, uh, yeah, for it its yeah, point it's cost and nerf. it's a flying uh, unit strength. So you always use it at the end of the game to, to score an objective and scenario. Um, sometimes, uh, in a pinch, you use it as a chaff piece because it does fly very far, and yeah, it's just so much utility. The, Nerf drop is a bit of uh, uh takes took a little bit of win out of it, but it's still really really very good. So you should yeah, always bring, right. probably two. I'm not sure if you should bring three now. It's somewhere between two and three, right? Because it is uh, for goblin prices, it is a little bit costly at 120 because 120 is almost two trombones. <laughs> it's, it's, Everything is in the currency of how many trombones is it worth? Yeah. <laughs> from a <laughs> from a tournament standpoint. If you ignore its damage output, I still say you take two in a competitive list because if you play loot and you get the first turn, you fly your wing, it's up, make a 90 degree pivot, pick up the tokens. And unless they have a turn one charge answer, you have two of the tokens behind your 20 drops for the rest of the game and you've won loot by default from deployment. Having two of those secures you loot. That's, that's kind of the at uh, Battle Pilgrims last year. I played Justin Langle the last round. And that's pr it was push, but that's how I won push. He didn't have a an answer to come charge my wing it that just picked up that flew up and picked up the token, and then the wing it just ran away while I just fed his ogres. Um, I, I fed his ogres goblins. Like here, eat this. I'm I'm still winning. Yeah, they also shoot incredibly well. Don't get me wrong; their damage output is yeah. bonkers. Yeah. Amazing! So. It's like they got, they just got uh vicious for free. Like not nothing else in the Coblin shooting has vicious, but he, they just have it for free. Yeah, literally bang it with wings that score. Right. All right. Next, uh, the giant. Does anyone take the giant? The, uh, did anyone used to take the giant before <clears throat> the slasher got buffed? Yeah, I was running giants all the time. They give goblins an answer to defense six. An answer they, to defense six. They gave six. an answer to defense six, but. Uh, when they got before they had Slayer, no, I left them at home because their damage output was just like, ooh, four and a half wounds for 250 points. I think they're cool. I think there's some really cool plays with them. And now not a single one's going to see the table until <laughs> they fix the unit strength discrepancy between a slasher who is yeah. better than a giant. Yeah. Significantly better now. So the giant is 225 points to be exact. And with that, we'll move on to the slasher. It is. 210 points. Uh, the base profile got buffed that it is now unit strength 2. Slashers across all armies have gained the buff that they are unit strength 2. They're currently the only monster slash titan with more than one unit strength. I think uh, if I were to speculate, it might be a test run to have all titans be unit strength 2, but maybe yeah, they maybe just started with the slashers non first. Titans are work, or I think we're going to beat unit strength too. Non flying yeah. titans, you're saying? Yeah, not flying, not flying titans. I, I mean, I don't mind even if the flying titans, there's a tangent, but I don't even, I even don't mind the flying titans be unit strength too, because you're not seeing a lot of dragons on the board right now, right? So why are we so afraid to buff them? Because they're not seeing enough table time anyway. But uh, back to the topic of the slasher. Firstly, it got unit strength too, and secondly, it has an upgrade. For 10 points, basically, you have a trombone mounted on the slasher. And it's amazing because it is height 6. That means 
it doesn't suffer intervening cover from most things in right because height tree no cover from height tree so you can shoot over hills no problem you can shoot over trolls no problem you can shoot over their large infantry no problem and if they have something height for screening you probably want to shoot at that height four unit anyway because height four units are not cheap uh yeah the goblin slasher is amazing hitting on threes with strider is nice hitting on trees like with, one of with the strider units in melee that we have access to crush dude wow. yes yeah, crush two ten attacks I mean, it's limited by its 10 attacks because I have uh, my most recent game, uh, Pegasus, came to check me up. It's, it can't reliably take out uh, Pegasus because it has a nerf of 12. So I did 7 wounds, but I wrote a little poor on the nerf roll. On average, it's going to deal about 5 wounds. So that's not very reliable to take out a Pegasus. You need a 7 twice on average. So, but uh, you, you still sound like an elite player. The same points. I mean, the giant sitting on 4s. Yeah, giant sitting on fours. Of wounds. I mean, yeah, but it's still great. Right? I, I, don't get me wrong; I run two of it, right? <laughs> oh no, I mean that's I, this is the unit I've been playing around with the most to switch in and try to figure out. But how many Same. slashes do you guys run? I've settled on two, three. Okay. I ran three a lot, but you lose. You just lose so much goblin. Yeah, and right. one, um, one with a sharp stick thrower is cute. Just like, ooh, I'm going to plink out your little banner bearer in the back on a lucky five. Um, and it happens. But two has felt really hot and heavy for me. Because if you double charge, that hurts. Do you do you add in the aura or no? Yeah, no, no. That's no. a waste. For me, it's a waste so of points. I've been, for I've, how been I run running it, I've been running it with two and Magua because Magua is a beast. Ooh. Mm -hmm. And at speed seven, he keeps up, and you have inspiring with him. So you have those as a three team kill squad with shooting. I didn't catch that Magua had the beast keyword. Yeah, he's got uh, the beast ability. So you good. run him into hordes of infantry, and now you're not getting held up because you're getting, you know, 3d3 rampage with it for 15 mm -hmm. points. It's just a, you only run one with the aura, obviously. Yeah. Because you don't yeah. need the second, but. It was uh, something I had been in my mind trying to f play around with. Instead of I was trying to figure out how to make them good with mobbies, and I just was like, "Man, it's a lot of points to try and make mobbies work good." Uh, you take it with so Magua. I've been, I've been running. Yeah, I would say that. That's Magua, this is individual Magua crush two. Uh, I mean, I'm getting a little ahead of us on the individual here, but sorry, <laughs> no. that was my combo. I was like, "Ooh, it, I, no, I missed my, it." That's a good combo. Yeah, uh, that's a that's a good take. When Travis plays, all our units are like a hundred point average for for my normal goblin list, and I take twenty four units in a twenty three hundred point list. Me trying to justify taking a two hundred point unit, I got to make sure it's worth it. When we get yeah. to my list, it's the first time I've taken less than twenty drops to a tournament ever, and I'm just <laughs> sitting here like eighteen, like, oh, what do I See, do? See, that's that's where I I don't like taking less than twenty, and I I try to do one to one. Every hundred points is a unit. <laughs> Yeah, and Add that flag it back in for forty just in case. <laughs> yep, you gotta you gotta curve that numbers, you know. <laughs> no, uh, yeah. Do you with like, the slasher? Um... It, it's really good, but it does cost a lot in terms of goblin economy, right? Because one slasher is probably three toys, <laughs> three goblin yeah. toys. I mean, so you put slashers in an elf list, and it's a, a it's a A plus A plus A plus dude. <laughs> you put <laughs> slashers in the goblin list, and you're yeah. like, that's a lot of rabble. Yep. <laughs> Um, yeah. <laughs> how have you played around with the with not taking the war trombone? Because obviously the big the big glitter is the war trombones, right? Like I just ran my list with war trombones because you get breath fifty plus all the other weird right. war trombone equivalent shooting we have, and it's terrifying. But I I've been playing around with those sharp sticks native. Man, they can turn one, start plinking away priority targets. Pretty nice. Like, for ten points, you're getting another war trombone that's defense five though with sixteen yeah, eighteen nerve. Two. It, I, I took the war trombone to the tournament. I'm not fighting with you. Oh, I'm, just no, I'm, just saying, I, I I'm just saying a, for a 10 points, that's a hard pass up. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm shops. with you. I think it's great naked too, but I mean, I, had, I haven't put, put a war enough, trombone on it. But with the war trombone, come on, an extra, like, why not? It, if yeah, the shop stick thrower hits on trying. four, then that would be debate. But yeah, because it hits on five, no question. Let's take the shot. It might be worth keeping it at a sharp stick thrower. Sharp, sharp stick thrower hitting on yeah. fours, but yeah, hitting on fives is kind of. I will yeah. say running them really separated has not worked out 
I, oh, no. I either have them flanking my war trombone battery, or I have them as one of the flanks. You just, so put, you just put two of them as their fire. own battery. <laughs> right. Oh, they they love. This That's shit. what I, I've been running those two. Like I said, with Magua just on the side in some test games oh, with Adam and Billy. Find the Magua. Alex, who shipped me now while we're in this chat, just so I can face the damn thing. <laughs> I'm gross, thanks, dude. I'm Tim. telling you, you have two. Trombone battery. No, I'm sides. finding it, Travis. It's already melee. over. I'm gonna go through the box of models and find it's, the Magua. It's <laughs> gross. <laughs> That's so sad. the thing, the thing about the aura is that you know rampage. It it doesn't trigger all the time, right? So sometimes right. it's just a waste of points. Yeah, and yeah, you, put that into a soul reaver infantry horde or infantry regiment instead. Yeah. I mean, hey, Travis's figure, defense. Figure what what chaffs up monsters a lot of times? Infantry mm. hordes because there's not enough attacks, you know, it Probably soaks it for two giant. turns. High nerve, but when you get rampage on that, because I feel like you're not gonna need as much slayer. There's so much crushing out there, and like yeah, you know, the giant, you know, the, those big things like that normally hit on four, so they're super swingy. Um but like with the goblin slasher, getting ramp you don't see getting rampage a whole lot, and I feel like the meta is shifting to a lot more infantry based stuff. Mm -hmm. It works against cavalry too. Right. Yeah. And so that's what I always forget is it works against cavalry, which you feel I feel like I always see two regiments of cav running around at the very least, but I don't know. I mean I think it's a pretty good upgrade for 15 points in any other army, but in goblins, 15 points is a lot. Every single point is a lot in goblins because like just for a few more points, oh, it's another wizard, it's another trombone. It's Right. Hey, if you've yeah. got the points, take it. Like I've been running me to madness on my flea bag troop instead of that aura, but mm -hmm. knowing that it works with Magua, that means gonna go away. It's yeah. it's problem solved. So yeah, I don't run any magic items, so <laughs> I've always got those extra little points here and there, little upgrades like that. Yeah, the slasher is great. Probably two. I like. I've uh, been very many. tempted to drop it to one in favor of more toys, but currently I'm still sticking at two. But maybe. One with more toys if you need them, uh, it could also be really good. Okay, next up, the Bangit, also another star unit in the goblin list. It mm -hmm. is an individual with a 12 inch blast D3 attack, piercing one. And the key thing about it, it is the only unit in the list that applies shattering. Who loves this the most? I think Steve loves it a lot. Steve, tell us about the Bangit. In your exploits, if you stop at sixty points, and that's that's why it's so good. Um, <laughs> it, three attacks with the again, it's the the same sort of uh, it's the same output as a uh, wing it without the vicious, but you get chattering on top of it. They're cheap enough that you could take three of them, and then there's nine shots hitting on fours with last d three each that add chattering. So yeah, it's just, it it's it's everything. You can take them, and then you take multiples of them. Um, I'm only running one right now, but that's yeah. Yeah, even just one this. is great. Travis, do you still put three of them in your list? Oh yeah, I never leave home without them. They run uh, around with the war trombone saying, "Here's shattering. What do you want? <laughs> Finish off, kill." I, I love them. Yeah. Awesome. If you're gonna run war trombones, bare minimum you take one, and I like the the Kyle Pool standard is take three war trombones and a bang it with the inspiring talisman, and that's your yep. battery yep. that holds the middle of your army. Yeah, because uh, it always hangs out with the trombones. So yeah, if you want an inspiring one sauce, probably one of them will be enough. So I've been running a second one with the piercing arrow because I found my list has 10 points short no matter what I do. So I bought the piercing arrow because why not? Getting that shattering off can be really crucial to your war trombone battery. I've failed three dice on four so many times yeah. that having the extra yeah. two, you know, extra one or extra two bang, it's just a guarantee shattering. It's been yeah. needed. Right. When I stop at two, like I said in the beginning, only because behind a rabble horde, you can only fit three war trombones and two 20s. So I, I just don't bring a third They're one. Individuals, they run around. They don't count. Come on. Don't Kyle. use logic, Travis. They just run around with their heads cut off, yelling the insane things. Come on. That's what goblins do. <laughs> that's why you win tournaments and I win best sports. <laughs> <laughs> you just run all over my if you see me play with goblins in person you just see stuff just go everywhere <laughs> and people are like try to mimic it i know i've had a couple of minnesota guys playing goblins lately that's why i've kind of quit playing and they've been like how do you do this and i'm like it's you, you run around you act like lower you're your playing. standards 
<laughs> let everything be Jeff. And everything you can, can die, skip. you just run and run and roll dice. Yeah. And then people Paige could have skipped this run. whole podcast if he said, lower your standards, <laughs> pray to the dice gods, and assume every drop is Jeff. <laughs> yes. There's your whole podcast page. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for listening. Cry at the end of the game when <laughs> yeah. they've only killed. It like, seems like they killed a lot, but the points are only about half the points of the game. <laughs> right. Happens every time. It does. I love it. I only killed that much. Yeah, sorry, dude. You want to count it too? That's all you killed, bud. Twelve units. It's a normal it army. Cool. Sorry. Next, <laughs> the bigot. Um, it's a three attack hero for fifty-five points. It does have inspiring, but um, nobody takes them. And it's the only prince class character with inspiring that I can think of. And still nobody uh, takes that. <laughs> nobody, yeah. You have to choose between a bow and crushing strength one. So the only, I've taken a bigot twice to tournaments and it was because both times I had a banner bearer whose only job was to inspire and the points left over to make him a good banner bearer. Oh, I could see that. 55 points for an inspiring unit that has three bow shots. Hard to be upset about. Like I'm He's not going to look at it and say it's a bad that. unit. It's, well, it's just you could also take other goblin units. Instead. For ten points more, you could take a flag it with a boomstick, or rather, yeah, for for ten points more, sixty five points, you can take a flag it with a boomstick. Yeah, which is now when we get to the king, that's why no one takes the bigot. But right. the bigot, is, I just look at the bigot as a banner bearer with stats. That's all he right. is to me. Is he's a banner bearer? Don't put him on a mount. It's a waste of points. So the I've flag waste, it. I went down that rabbit hole. It's also a cheap uh, 40 point inspiring oh, best sauce. Best banner bearer in the game. Best banner bearer in the game. Super cheap, uh, but with a 10 nerf. Um, some people might give it boomstick for extra lightning bolts. Or you could I'm running give him it, with Hex right now. Uh, Hex, or you could He's give so it. Cheap. Loot. Loot him insatiable dankness. Right. <clears throat> you could technically um, run all, you could run three with those yeah. three items. I wouldn't, but you could. It'd be really cheap. But man. For 40 points, you throw a magic item on him and you have an inspiring source of annoyance. Oh, it's, it's sweet. Um, funny enough, I do have hex, but it's on the wizard because it's five points cheaper than the item. So that's also worth considering. Um, yeah, but the wizard also would like to cast lightning bolt most of the time. So so I did find that in my game, I would rather cast lightning bolt than hex. So my opponent's caster still ran wild with his spells. So flag it uh, is great. 40 points, inspiring, kit it out with items to boost, to, to help your army. Next up is the king for 70 points, 5 attacks, crushing 1, hitting on force, but he also has a bow with 5 attacks, uh, hitting on force, and it's 18 inches, so don't underestimate the bow. It does help plink in 1 or 2 damage sometimes. And you can, uh, there's uh, 3 upgrades, one of it is the flea bag, which nobody takes. The next one is Jero's Pendant, which is a aura of hit strong for 15 points. And it says that if you take the pendant, you can't uh, take the flea back mount, which I assume is so that you don't get to spread it around the board. But then there's a recent new upgrade that is Grody Snark to make him speed 10 flying. <laughs> and you can take that with the pendant. And on top of that, he gains a lot of rules, Blast, Thunderous Charge 2. Uh, he, he has a wonky exploding mechanic that he might uh, sometimes explode on everything within 6 inches, including itself for 1 damage if you roll 1. Uh, you can't take items if you take Crony Snark, but the upgrade, and I just noticed this now, is only 30 points compared to writing a mount is 35 points. Something's not right with this point cost, and I think that's the reason why everybody loves to take them. I do take it because I think it's very versatile, and especially if your army has a little bit of melee fighting capabilities, that Headstrong Aura is something that you can uh, spread around to make sure your wavered uh, melee units do get to fight. I know I take them. I know Steve takes them. Kyle, do you take them? Uh, I take one. I used Grony. to take more before Grony existed because um, they answered the they answered one of the two weaknesses goblins had. Goblins suck versus defense six grind, aka EOD type armies, and they're horrible versus flying circus. So a hero on a mount was my old sit-down dragon, and Grony does it better, cheaper, faster, stronger. But I only take one right now. Right. Just Grony. Do you take the pendant? No, no I, I don't. I have a whole lot of fearless stuff. Right. Or things with so little nerve that who cares? If you're running trolls, the pendant is, I think you have to take it. Yes. 
because it's just so cost effective. But no, I do not run it on him because my list either it's dead or I don't care. There is a minor nerf to the headstrong aura in terms of how uh, charges are declared nowadays that you have to declare all the sites simultaneously. What you could use to do is you charge the king in the flank of a target. And because after it charged, it is now within range of the trolls. And then it could roll for its headstrong and charge into the front of that same unit if it passes. But now because you have to declare all the charges together, that is no longer an option. So that's like a minor nerf to how it works. But otherwise, uh, yeah, if if you have trolls, you probably want to take the hit strong aura. Steve, anything else to add? In a non-goblin to army, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> in a non-goblin army, it's amazing. In a goblin army, it's just really good. <laughs> yeah, that, that aura would be like, I'd kill for it in orcs, right? But in goblins, it's like, eh, I don't care enough. The, well, when we talk about the list, uh, I, I do run two kings, one Gurney Stark and one with Jarrah's Pendant. But, but that's also because I'm running trolls. It's a really good lord level character for 70 points. Uh, of note, he is not mighty. And I think we have the only lord character that's not mighty. I don't think there's another one. Never heard of that. that sounds about right. Yeah. Mighty and goblins doesn't sound right together. So <laughs> the reason to take that Magwa model, I can't find Travis. Yep. You go find. Come on, get him. Travis, do you bring Grony? I did. I've been thinking of taking him out to get the Goblin Slasher in, potentially. I just found Grony. Now that Host Shadow Beast has changed, I mean, he hits on four, so he's swingy. Um, yeah. He's squishy. It, but, I mean, he's, I he's still great. Machines. He's still I great. Grony is either two or nine. Like, it's it's either all two or nine. nine. Yeah. I, I, I've I done always bad with Grony. Like, even when I had a Host Shadow Beast on him, I know... Like Donnie, I played against Donnie. Shoot, he'd do 12 wounds to me in a heartbeat. Over and over again, I go, what's wrong with my Grani? Yeah. They're definitely good choices. You can't go wrong. I mean, it, with trolls, definitely take Jerry, spend it with the king. And then, I mean, if you have the 100 points and you need Grani, it's great for 100 points. So Yeah, because it does have Thunderous 2 and Crushing 1. So it's right. hitting at Crushing 3 on its first swing. Uh, so you could put a dent in defense five and even defense six units. I mean, quite a big of bit of a dent. melee three d three blast. So I mean, you you could spike heavy. So maybe Those the other reason I like Grony naked because I didn't really run him with Ho Shadow Beast even before the nerf. But before he existed, I ran the assassin or a king with wings a lot. Yeah, because it was almost the same price as the mount, but you got fly. So for me, it's just been a tool that my playstyle is built around having. I always, I always found throwing host on Magua was a better choice, just because of the consistency. Mm. Again, you win tournaments, I win sports votes. You know, neither here. <laughs> Grani's scary, and everybody would target him, and everybody would forget that Magua's crush two. <laughs> Magua's better. Magua's yeah. hits on threes, and he's got a weird base, so everybody would be like, "Well, what's wrong with this guy?" Next up, let's talk about the Sting It. I don't think anybody brings him. It's like an assassin type uh, character. Um, he was what I took before Brony existed, and now I don't take it. Yep. Crushing one, duelist, individual scout, stealthy, vicious, <clears throat> and throwing knives 12 inches. And I notice the throwing knives has no piercing or. Yeah. Yes, universal vicious. So <clears throat> that's all it has. That duelist really matters. Indeed. With wings, he's cool. Then you'd rather With just wings, take Brony, cool. right? So. Well, you, I, I ran a list with both for a while. That was really fun. Right. Because you're just, the turn one, you're doing, yeah. you can start charging War Machines turn one if your opponent gives you the opportunity. Right, yeah, Scout. That's yeah. about it. So next is a star unit, of course. It is the wizard. It is, or whiz, rather. <laughs> 20, 45 points. 9-11 nerf comes inbuilt with Lightning Bolt 3. You could buy Bane Chan 2. For 20 points, weakness 2 for 15 points, and hex 2 for 10 points. And then, of course, you have the access to all the arcane knowledge stuff. He is only level 1, and um, I think in this current meta, we'll always take one with Alchemist Curse, whether it's a level 2 Alchemist Curse or level 1 if you are staffed for points. But Alchemist Curse is just such a good spell. You, you're not going to leave without it. I think that's my opinion. What else would you take on your wizards? Uh, let's so have... I'll answer how mine's kitted and then I'll be quiet for a while. Okay. I run the Alchemist Curse 2, mm -hmm. the upgrade version, 
I put mm-hmm. hex on him just in case. I put him on a mount. And they give him boots levitation, and I run around screaming, "I'm a discount elf!" Every turn. <laughs> So he's speed 20 casting spells and then eventually he dies because he's not 11 nerve and he's always alone, uninspired in a corner somewhere. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, I run mine a little bit more responsibly. Um, I give it the, <laughs> the, the inspiring talisman and then Alchemist Curse uh, too. Right. Uh, so that's exactly how I ran one of mine. Inspiring talisman and Alchemist Curse. I'm running another one. Um, I used to run three, so the third one would usually get boomstick, but then now it's nerfed that boomstick on an existing lightning bolt only adds two. For just 10 points, Conjurer's Staff is almost a lightning bolt four, right? Uh, I give it Bane Chant and Hex, that, so the Conjurer's Staff also makes the Bane Chant and Hex more reliable. So that those are how I kit out two of my Wizards. Travis, how do you kit your Wizards out? I don't. They're, they're 45 points of Lightning Bolt 3. That's their whole job in life. They run around <laughs> screaming, I have Lightning Bolt 3. If you want to kill me, good, go for it. Lightning Bolt 3 sounds very little. So what what, what do you think of that? So like, I oh. run, you know, you've got yours at 85 points there for the one. I could get two Wizards almost for that point. Get Lightning right. Bolt 6. That's true. Uh, runs around Magua. Magua has Lightning Bolt 4. So I end up most of the time, I'll have Lightning Bolt 10 running around. Mm-hmm. I play very, very low point stuff. <laughs> I don't know if that's why I win games, Kyle, but <laughs> my, I, everything dies, so everything's cheap. I, I, the way so I, I won way more games when I played all trash, Travis. As soon as I started trying to get good at the game, I started losing tournaments left and right. <laughs> I mean, I, everything's trash. Everything dies. I, I put more points on it. That's, that's how right. I play goblins, so... Yeah, people but, make fun of Lightning Bolt 3, but over the course of the game, that's it's like Lightning Bolt 18. I mean, if you're doing one wound a turn with it, right? I mean, that's six <laughs> turns of Lightning Bolts. I mean, it, it does enough. You need to stack it with two of them for the price of one wizard with multiple options. I mean, I... I, you know, I would love I'm to doing... play your style, cow out of Travis, where everything is super cheap. The only thing is that you need a lot of unlocks to do that, and that would mean six hearts of Rebel and maybe more... You're not wrong. So th- Just paint. That's, I, that's a lot of pain. So. I do run six hordes in a regiment. I have that is what's nerve. holding that's me back from running a lot of stuff. Running the all trash list. Next is we have the troll bruiser, and that is basically your troll large infantry hero. Five attacks, one hundred and ten points. Uh, I've run them before, and I felt that they weren't worth it. What do you guys think? Put the aura on one. Yeah, if you can get one in a flank somewhere because they can fit and they're nimble, mm-hmm. they're. they're they're pretty sneaky, honestly. People forget about them. You get all the hordes involved, and you know, I I don't run one in my my tournament list because he's 110 points, but he is fun to play around with. I do I have I've done that before with him. Even as a hero, it does have the troll nerf gap of three, so that lower waiver value of 12, 12, 15, right? So 12 is not that hard to hit. So sometimes you just see him getting wavered randomly and easily. We I like stuck. to put an orb of towering presence on him, have a unit strength two ogre. It's the same thing as a banner bearer in the ogre list. Yeah. Um, and if I'm running a lot of mincers, I just nestle him in between because he's the same height and he's tiny. And sometimes that extra two or three wounds can make a 90 point mincer go over the top. Sounds good. So it's still viable. Next, I love this unit, King of King on Chariot, seven attacks, 13, 15 nerf, 130 points. Awesome thing is a uh, thunderous one, crushing one on the charge, hitting on force. So can still d- do decent damage. Can flanks, can get flanks for double damage. Speed nine, so it's, it's very maneuverable with nimble. Uh, because he has seven attacks, that also means its bow shots are seven attacks. He has one pip higher than the normal king, even crony. And it is a uh, unit strength. So a mo- another mobile unit strength that sometimes is more versatile compared to the Winget. Uh, I know I like it. I know Steve likes it. Kyle, what yeah, do you think of it? They're really annoying, so I like them by default. They're also really fragile, so they're perfect goblin units. It's just a playstyle choice, but right. if you play them, shoot for a couple turns and then find a flank. Or at, there are times where I have to charge them in to hold up a unit. I don't think Travis plays it. I, I do off and on. I mean, it's not a staple for my tournament list but i mean they're definitely 
a usable unit. I mean, if you got 130 points, I'd take it. Steve, add your final take on the King on Chariot. They're the second best chariot in the game. Second best chariot hero in the game? Worst (laughs) chariot unit, second best chariot character. That's goblins. (laughs) Yep. Uh, The 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 Pharaoh and Cherry is the best, but yeah, the K K and Cherry is it's super points efficient for what it was. I love them. And seven bull shots are, are awesome as well. Yeah. We've covered the Luglets, we've covered Margons. Uh Grop Longnail, that's your character. It's not a wizard, but it's actually her combat hero. Four attacks plus D3, crush one, and it has a special rule which uh, when he scores a hit, the opponent gets minus one, basically get weakness. Harold, do you use this guy with your mincers? Uh, not anymore. No, Weakness okay. is way more consistent. Okay. But when I was running in my list, oops, all mincers that I'm thinking about running at Peachtree, if I can go, he he makes an appearance. But the big thing is he doesn't inspire Travis. Yeah, that was what I was I, because I've, I've always wanted to play around with this guy. But yeah, the not inspiring part is what's held me back most <clears throat> more than anything. I, I ran it in the host Shadow Beast list last year, but and I, I, I cast host Shadow Beast on Grop more than I did uh, Grony. Right. But yeah, now that host Shadow Beast is different, I don't. I, I like think it. it's a it's a cool narrative character for for fun play, and there's I bet you there's some metas right, like Cap Regiments hate him. Oh yeah, but anything that's going to one shot a Mincer doesn't care if it's ensnared or weakness to him. He, they're still going to blow through him. Right. I think he's good in any other army, but he's just okay in goblins, which is a problem that <laughs> yeah. he has. It's surprisingly very resilient. I did fight against it before. So Grub, uh charged a cavalry unit, hit it, so it got weakness. And on top of that, the cavalry unit got stripped of its tundras, right? So it's hitting and back, it also has wounding on fives and, and stairs. So they got minus two. Minus one to hit and minus one to wound. They lost their thunder and a regiment of cavalry couldn't kill Grop. I was like, oh my goodness, it's fearless as well. Yeah, I use him for his duelist more often than not. But yeah. if I'm trying to fish duelist charges, I'm pretty sure I've already lost. <laughs> right. Yeah. Speaking of duelist, I'll just skip ahead to Magua. That's Magua and Juice. He oh, is... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, he's a hero large cavalry, so it's on a 50 mil base, but it's also individual. So uh it might catch a lot of people out on that uh if they're not familiar with the goblin army. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna grab a 50 mil base out the basement. It's pretty costly <laughs> at 150 points, but then it's a melee tree, seven wow. attacks, crushing two dualist and mighty vi- uh, vicious wild wow, charge d3. The unit is actually like uh, Morbis Wrangler and the Mor- and his pet Morbis. Uh, but surprisingly, he is also something like a wizard, spellcaster level two, and he has lightning bolt four. It's, um, a, it's yeah. a vampire. Obviously, it's a lot like, of it's like a defense vampire. five, twelve, fourteen. Yeah. It's a baby vampire. He's a vampire wannabe. But see the keywords it says beast right there. Yeah, that's uh. <laughs> now he gets rampage t three well. slashers. <laughs> well, let me put it this way, Travis. I can't find the model, so I've already <laughs> sculpted a new one. Okay, perfect. Yeah. He's never let me down. Every year I've taken him. So what <laughs> what do you use him for most of the time? Like what do you see him doing in the game most of the time? So I lightning bolt with him the first three turns, and then when the people the lines start coming together and stuff, he goes where he needs to be. With seven attacks crush too. Wild I mean, he's great. He's mighty. Mm-hmm. So I throw him out there sometimes. He's just a great versatility unit and for 150 points it's quite a bit especially how i play the game but he's my most expensive unit in my army right always <laughs> well almost always i guess i've played i i loved Magua, but i took him out because i put the slasher in because they're all quite costly so you can't have too many costly things if not the goblins start having much less drops awesome unit for sure i love him i'm gonna play him yeah i made kyle he's still height too right yeah he's height too but Okay, so what he's I normally still do is I have him. Hero. He's height two. He's just on a different base. Uh, kind of like the the mob base or height two calf. Because he's not riding on the the model itself. He's not riding on the beast, so he doesn't have that height advantage. Because there's two of them, you know. He's got a pet with him. Yeah, he's the guy on. He's a goblin on foot <clears throat> with a pet next to him, which makes me wonder how does he keep up with Juice if he's not riding on Juice. <laughs> I imagine him being dragged around on his only speed on the six, leash. So he's just scampering <laughs> around, you know. Okay, last unit. That we're going through, Kuzlo and Matfall. This unit is also available in August. I think 
Kuso and Metfor is amazing in Ogres, but uh, not as fantastic in Goblins. 145 points, speed 8. Uh, it has this aura that affects, gives a minus 1 nerf to both friendly and enemies. And any of you use them to any success? Yeah. I've never, I, I've only ever, ever played them with Ogres because could, you can stack Brutal with it, but I've never played it with Goblins. I love them with Goblins. Yeah, Kyle, tell us. Because I, I don't care about my own units, so who cares? The only list I found success with him in, to be very clear, is Mincer Spam. Because when you run those Brutal with all of those things, and he's really good at forcing opponents to take hindered charges with how he manipulates the battle, and he brings a tall hex. So he, he sort of fills a similar role as like a support caster, but you get him in the flank, he hits, you know, really, really combat effective like an ogre, or not an ogre, like a troll hero. Mm -hmm. So he's, if you're going to run a lot of mincers, he fills the role of both a wizard and a troll hero, and he right. gives your entire army effectively brutal too. But what I end up finding I do the most with him is for like two or three turns while we're fighting, I'm using that enthrall ability to pull my opponent out of position to either buy hindered charges, or if you get a good enough roll, you can even make the charge impossible by overlayering your opponent, getting them too mm. clustered to fit. That said, for 145 points, it's a lot of goblins you can get. I find that for five points more, you can get Magua, which I would rather <clears throat> get. It's, right, that's right, it's yeah. just an easier tool than Kuzlo. Yeah, I mean, I'm not building on Kuzlo right now. <laughs> <laughs> But I do have a cool Kuzlo model, and I have had a lot of success with him. Um, the biggest difference is Kuzlo scores. Right. Scoring matters. But Magua's got two more attacks. Well, he's with the logic. <laughs> <laughs> you can't double him, though, on the flank like Kuzlo. Ah, dang it. Now, oh, here we go. Yep. Um, now it's a debate. Dang it. Wow. Uh, but for five more points, I don't think, I think either of them have their uses for sure. So. I just don't think you want to paint a Kuzlo. I, honestly, I, I like Kuzlo's model. <laughs> yeah, it's a cool battle. And with Mincers, I would definitely cool. take him. Getting that brutal stack. I mean, with Ogres, I'd take him. Yeah, I haven't had any success outside just, of Mincer spam and Goblins yeah, with him. I was going to say, just right. the regular way I play Goblins, super cheap, I would never have a use for him. All right, with that said, we are going to next go into a list that each of us prepared. Uh, I wonder who should go first. Maybe I'll go first because I have it loaded on screen. So it's a little bit of a hybrid between melee and shooting, but leaning more towards shooting. It has four hordes of rebel, as you do, to start unlocking things. One horde of trolls with the dead packs. A mincer more orc troop with skirmisher boots, as I've alluded earlier. Three war trombones. A more pop launcher. A sharp stick troll. Two wingets. Two slashers with war trombones. A king crony with gyros pendant. Two wizards. One with elk. Uh, Alchemist Curse at level 2. That means I have to take the knowledgeable upgrade with Inspiring Talisman. And another wizard with Conjurer's Staff, Bane Chan, Hex. And lastly, a king on Chariot. This is a 2,300 points list, 19 drops, and 23 units strength. I think overall it's a little bit on the low side because I'm not running 6 Hordes of Rebel. One thing that i like to also indicate which is not shown in the list stats is the number of scoring drops. So I have four rebel trolls, that's five, mincer mob, six, two wingets, eight, two slashes, ten, and a king on chariot. So it's only eleven out of the nineteen unit scores because there are lots of uh heroes and war engines. I've been tweaking around uh, a variation of this list for a long while now. The trick is to get the right balance of having a good amount of shooting to threaten to take out a lot of units or one-shot a defense 5 unit while having a bit of melee capability in case I get gummed up in combat. So my main combat pieces will be the troll horde, two slashes, right? And the mincer mob, as well as Grony contributing some melee damage, as well as the king on chariot contributing some melee damage. So I pretty like I, I, I like this pretty much. 19 drops is decent for a goblin list. It's not high, but it's not low either because you, if you start taking the expensive toys like lots of slashers and mincer mobs, it's the, you know, the number of drops you have quickly goes down. Yep, so I think this is a nice balanced list. I would love to try. <laughs> I've tried the six rebel and lots of toys list 
on UB before, and I've found that sometimes six hordes is a little bit overwhelming and that they are everywhere and I'm getting myself jammed up sometimes, but it also provides a very big problem for the enemy. Four hordes, I think, is just enough. They can still handle four hordes, but by the end of the day, they will have suffered massive casualties. So I think four hordes is a good number to still provide a problem to the opponent. So that's the rationale behind my list. So next, let's move to Steve's list because I think his will be somewhat similar to mine because we do bounce ideas off each other quite often. Steve? Yeah, my list is two regiments of rabble, two hordes of rabble. I have two troll hordes that are naked. I've got the sharpness, Minster regiment, three trombones, two wingets with better bombs away, two slashers with trumpets, Jareth's pendant king, a Kearney Snark king, a flag guy with the loot, a uh, bang it and a whiz caster level two so i can get alchemist curse two that is the inspiring talisman so that's uh 19 drops 24 unit strength <laughs> very close to mine how many units of them score 11 ah that's on the dot same <laughs> as mine so we we have pretty much the same list just with a slight flavor tweak depending yeah. on our preference those are both really good. If I wanted to get a snapshot of goblins, those mm. lists give you a lot of access to all the toys and all the play style. Those are both really good lists. Like if a new person wanted to try it, like proxy it up, I think that's also a, a list that either of your lists is something a, a new player to the game to goblins could pilot to a high level of success very early on. I guess that's exactly what we want, being the two newest players to, to goblins, I guess. I don't think they're bad at all. One thing interesting about the list that both Steve and I brought is that we don't have a lot of long-range shooting. For me, is one more pop launcher, one sharp stick thrower, two visits. And you have two kings in the medium range, 18-inch uh, bows, but the rest, a lot of it is 12 inches, which is something I noticed goblins might have this characteristic of not a lot of uh, long-range shooting because in order to get it, it's either you have to bring the sharp stick, more pop or rock thrower, and then your wizards, but each wizard only contributes Lightning Bolt 3, right? They are cheap, but then you need a lot of unlocks if you have to bring all those wizards. And of course, if long-range shooting is a concern of yours, then uh, you bring Magua as another Lightning Bolt 4 to add on to that. And and there's something to be said about spell shooting, because if you are facing Night Stalkers, they have innate stealth across the board, and then a lot of your shooting is uh, much less effective. With that, let's move on to Kao to share his list with us. Uh, is it going to have more... Melee punch, count. It's a mid-range control list. So if you walk with inside 17 inches, the game starts. And until you enter 17 inches, the game hasn't started. The trombone range, basically. <laughs> it's the trombone range. There's there's a few tweaks uh, uh, within 17, but yeah, it's the 17 inches when pain can begin. So this is, I'm just going to do the Goblin No Sports Boat variant 2, the one that I took fourth place with at the uh, the GT. And it's four hordes of rabble, mm -hmm. a troop of flea bag riders with me to madness, because in that tournament, I was expecting to face a lot of Abyssal Dwarves with Gargoyles, and I did. And mm -hmm. Mead lets you win the chap off. You don't need that item. I took the Mogwin, so that's a legendary Mogwin unit, mm -hmm. uh, as my regiment unlock I was missing. Mincer Mob with Brew of Sharpness, uh, because that's how they come. Three War Trombones, two Wingets with Bombs Away, two Goblin Slashers with Toot Toot Machines, Grony Snark upgrade on a King. I took a Flagget with Trickster's Wand. So for 55 points, I have access to Hex 2 and Inspiring. I took a bang it with the piercing arrow and a bang it with inspiring talisman. And then I took the uh, I'm an elf wizard, which is 145 points. And that gives me a mount, boots of levitation, lightning bolt three, hex two, and alchemist curse two. And he came in handy because I played four defense five plus armies. So that puts me at 19 total units with 24 unit strength, three inspiring units. And of those 19, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 8, 9, 10, 11. I have 11 scoring. Right. Oh, that's <laughs> the three of us are very, very close in terms of what we've built. And... Doesn't shock me. I talk to Steve a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Travis is the outlier. I am the yeah. outlier. <laughs> uh, before we move on to Travis, I'd like to hear about your success or exploits of the discount, El discount Alchemist Curse Elf Mage. It takes a couple of games to figure out because, boy, he's fragile, right? He's like 9-11. Yes. So if you go against an army that's got a couple unicorns with lightning bolt or I don't know Travis's list, um, he's dead. Yeah, just outright he's dead. So he just becomes a height three wizard that sits with all your uh, all your war trombones and mm -hmm. shoots with them and applies alchemist curse with those. And there's nothing wrong with using it, but he costs a lot for that. Mm -hmm. But if they don't have that very specific lightning bolt poke answer, he's he's dropping yeah. 
three to four wounds a turn on anything in the game. And he yep. just starts chipping away at that regiment in the back or against that greater obsidian golem. He's fun. He's cute. He's also going to go away from Magua. So let's be real. Magua and Jews is going to replace that model outright. So there's this is just going to be a clean drop. It's a very easy chop. That list really likes fighting things goblins are already good at, and it hates fighting other goblins. So if your list has goblin flavor, I'm going to struggle. Of three lists so far, um, the commonality would be three war trombones, two wingets, two slashers. Uh, all three of us have Drony. We all have Wiz in one form or another, right? And at least two hordes of Rebel Soldiers. Uh, we have been some mobs, but mine is in troop, while yours are in regiments. But none... Do you have the singular mincer? Not in that list, no. In most of my lists, yes. Just not right. in this one. Finally, let's review Travis's list. So the one I adjusted to fit this new red book... It's very similar to the ones I've taken. Mm-hmm. I've only made a few adjustments here and there. But for 2300 point list, I have six hordes of rabble, one regiment of rabble, three war trombones, three mob pup launchers, three wingets. I put in the goblin slasher with the aura, the war trumpets, mm-hmm. three bangets, one with the inspiring talisman, one with the trickster's wand, two wizards naked, and then magua. So 23 units, 25 unit strength, 11 scoring units. It's the same. We have all 11 scoring units and three inspiring sources. So mine has two. And that is the inspiring talisman on a Bangit and yep. Margo itself. Kyle has three inspiring, right? And Steve. I, have, I don't really count Groni. You Groni, have four. Groni's off on adventures. Yeah, but the same. Because I've got the Wiz with inspiring. I've got the King with the Jarrus pendant. I've got the Lagging. Dane Chance flag oh. guy. And then I've got Groni. Yeah. Groni's off doing his own stuff. So really three. So Travis, you still think uh, Winged is still worth taking three off with that nerf drop? I like it because they can just hide behind a rabble cord walking up a flank somewhere. And then late game, I have three options that I can throw away or control with. So I've found that they still do well. I obviously hide them from shooting because people like to pick them off now their nerve sucks. But uh, I don't know. I've, I've always found they've, they've done me well in the list and won me games. So I've kept three. You three have a wingers slash. also have similar damage output to three war trombones, so it gives you yeah. a third control battery. Yeah, so I, um, I and they staff real good. I definitely do mine in battery formations, basically, like Kyle's saying. The three war trombones run with the three bangets. The three wingets go off on their own together. Mop up launchers are just kind of intermediate help where needed. The now the goblin slasher will probably run with Magua and the two wizards. I definitely group my stuff together as kill squads. You run one slasher. In this one, yeah, I was only able to fit the one. Yeah, that's that's the that's, <laughs> that's the goblin economy uh, issue that we have. Yeah, because I I dropped Grani and I think the Mincer because I think this list originally had twenty four units and it was twenty four unit strength at twenty three hundred points. I always try to keep my total units comparative to the total point score for goblins. <laughs> it's like a special achievement. It is. No one ever. <laughs> I mean, what all three of your lists were nineteens. Which to me is, uh, I mean, most armies are average, what, 14 to 14, 16, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, elite armies are down 11 and 13, I would say. Yeah. For, you know, so I mean. In the mid-Atlantic, it's like 12. Yeah. Is, is yeah 14 is our meta here. So I would say I've, I've been seeing ours creep up 14, 15 units, but nobody normally normally gets close to the even the 19 that you guys had, all, all three had for yeah. the Goblin list. And my list, I just, I like putting in so many different things. So let's have some quick questions that uh, I just like to ask. What We all have 2,300 points lists. Do you think Goblins perform better in a 2,000 point environment or worse? I think worse. Goblins, Goblins scale. So the bigger the game, the more disproportionately outnumbered your opponent is. In my, is my experience, the smaller the game, the harder Goblins are to win with. I would go to the opposite. Because I feel like, at least the way I, the way I play it, I still have as many units as the point <clears> system, <throat> but everyone's hammers get worse as we go down in points. Mm-hmm. So things get easier to kill, nerves get lower. I find that actually getting yeah, they more have one points hammer on the less. table is harder because you have more mm-hmm. units to deal with and you have less deployment area. Because I've played, it ends up being like 2,800 points at Renegade almost with the special character and stuff because he plays 2,500. It just ends up blocking myself up. Mm-hmm. But that's because I run so many units. But I I have found it's easier to win with goblins at lower points because the opponent's army goes down in units more eco- economically than goblins do. Oh, yeah, call, uh, for I, the first time ever. 
I do play 2000 and 2300 quite a bit. I, my local meta, we used to play 2000 a lot before coming up to 2300. And usually, for at least for my elite list at 2300, I'm at 13 drops. At 2000 points, I'm at 11 drops. So the difference, the 300 point difference is usually one big unit and one chaff, whether it's a hammer or an anvil, a 200 plus point unit and a chaff. From 2300, scaling down to 2000, the opponent is usually one hammer less in a list of maybe five hammers and then one less is quite significant. So it's also uh, much easier for the goblin list to take down, I guess. So I think there's uh, merits for both high points and low points. So I think we goblins play well in both point ranges. I don't think there's a point range where goblins are a bad choice. That's true. Even all the way down to ambush. Ogres are the king of ambush, but goblins are not far behind. I've not had enough experience with ambush to comment on that. So (laughs) Uh, another question is time an enemy for the goblin player your chess clock because you have so many units to move so many attacks to make so many dice to roll are you often finding yourself needing to play very fast or often short of time i'll take that one as the most recent person on the clock i have no problem with time because i've been practicing this stuff for ages and a good way to get good is to practice on a lower clock than your tournament asks for um with one exception when i play dan kamek I usually play him down to like the seconds mm. uh, because he's just so damn good at this game. Mm. But outside of that, I haven't had a lot of issues lately, um, but I see a lot of new Goblin players, especially if you're running the the kind of junk Travis runs or the, my normal spam list in the mid-20s, you really have to know what you're going to do before your turn starts mm. or you will clock out. I came close to clocking out round one at a pilgrimage last year. But that was my first. I had one in-person game with the list beforehand. But then, like I, game two, I was I was back to speed. I'm just a fast player to begin with. I am a slow player, but I've not played it in a time environment yet because all my games are on UB and uh, played by email so far. So I think that is a potential challenge for me. But Travis, what about yourself? I know there's definitely new players would definitely have troubles with my list for sure. There's so much things going on. You have so many units to move around. I think my biggest thing, if I'm ever close to having clock clocking out issues, is because I'm dinking around talking with my opponent and having a good time. Um, uh, I mean, that's more likely what happens, right, Kyle? <laughs> I mean, I it's not because I'm playing bad or you know playing slow or whatever. Yeah. Well, we it's, almost clocked out, and neither of our armies were complicated at that event. It was just like, oh, Travis has your kid. Oh, should I yeah, should move now? Exactly. Three. Yeah. I mean, you know, to I'm me, good. most I'm of the time for how the event goes like at masters i'm dialed in i generally keep the talking to a minimum because i know what the goal is there but you know and i end up with 30 minutes left on my clock half the time with god wow. um, yeah no, i just finished three of my games i had 15 plus minutes and we were running yeah. an hour and five minute clocks right at right. 2500 effectively but right. yeah, regular GTs, I, I do find times where i'm close to clocking out but it's because i'm bsing with everybody and having a good time <laughs> I suspect that's, that's what's happening up. between Kao and Dan. You guys oh, 100%. I know trash it is. talk to each, yeah. each other yeah, all the time, right? Of, uh, a lot of I would here. never trash talk one of my club mates <laughs> who's better at the game than me in order to distract him. <laughs> right. So that's an that's interesting uh, reply from all of you, but maybe more of you are fast players. Another question. Do you think goblins are, in general, newbie-friendly oh, as yeah. a goblin general? To play, but not to collect. I think goblins are brutal to collect. Yeah, you have to paint a lot and they're just all with so little points. Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's a high barrier to entry. I think I think that's what I, I a think lot they're of easy to play. Mm. Is is because the hot, there's so the much hot base into armies. It. Yeah. Yeah. When I, I don't bring them out a whole lot for just regular play, um, or even just regular GTs, because people don't enjoy playing against it. And for me, I I'd rather have the enjoy of the game. So like most of the time I take mine out for masters, but I am playing twenty three drop. I mean, you can kill the whole army and get no points list. So That's interesting that people to... don't find it fun to play against goblins. Why is it not fun? I think it's mostly because of all the decisions they have to make are never good. And people <laughs> don't don't enjoy that in a game, right? They, they like, you know, I mean, if you're playing against me and I'm sitting there just smiling the whole time and you're killing stuff, but I don't care. I mean, do you feel accomplished? I'm just, you know, people have told I'd me multiple times. I cheer for people to just, kill my stuff. Like, I root them on. They, I do too. You know that. Because if they don't <laughs> kill it, it's in my way. Yep, half the time it is, hundred <laughs> percent. But I just, I know people don't enjoy it. They just, there's so much stuff on the table. They get psyched out. 
it, it's it a mind be game. very intimidating for a new player to go up against 20 plus yeah. drops well, especially with that, their yeah. 13 drop elite lists. Having been on the reverse side, trying to learn how to pilot those elite lists against my own armies. I'm good at playing my army and I still struggle to figure out how to pilot against it. So there, there is a, a double-edged sword, right? Like I don't take the list that I just talked about doesn't go to the, the local game store. Right. It goes to tournaments and tournament practice events. And that's it. Because I, I don't so. want to face some new guy and then just be like, well, you're tabled. Sorry. Yeah. Definitely been on the receiving end of that. I piloted my Green Lady list against Steve and I'm like, at some point I was like, well, I have to charge two hammers into the Rebel. <laughs> like 500 points to yeah. take out 125. And then he just charged one to death and then shot the other one to death. Like, oh, I just traded 500 points for 125. Right. Yep. So that's Goblins that's are a double-edged game. sword from a new player standpoint. They're easy to get into but they're hard to collect. And then as you get better, they become very easy to abuse newer players with. So you have to be conscientious of making your list softer because it's really hard to soft play goblins without just being deliberately like, oh, I chaffed myself too much. Mm -hmm. So they're they're a really hard army to be new player experience with. That's a good segue to the next part that I want to talk about, which is like general tips for the goblin general, all right, which is, I think one of the first that will happen is you might block yourself up too much with the rebel, right? And the rebel hordes especially. And I think that's what your the opponent will try to do as well, to try to jam up your forces with the rebel. And especially not killing the rebel. Actually, you don't mind the rebel dying. But when they don't kill the rebel, that's where your stuff starts getting jammed up. If you can back up the rebel horde and have all your shooting battery go into the opponent, that's fine. But let's say another thing to watch out for is when they charge something that's height 2 to hold up the rubble horde and then your trombone can't see that unit in front and that's then your trombone can't shoot so that those are the things that the opponent might try on the goblin player so do watch out for those uh, those little things that might catch you off height 2 stuff jamming up the rebel horde uh, or even just height 3 stuff jamming up the rebel horde and when you park your mincers behind it can't really charge unless it has a nimble the slasher could charge Actually, because it only has a 75 milliliter frontage, as long as you put it on the left or the right edge of the Rebel Horde, it could combo charge in with the Rebel Horde. So that's another plus point to why we should take slashes. They're really amazing. Any other common pitfalls that you see co new Goblin players are running into and what they should be looking out for? Well, I'll do my three that I try to give all the new players. Like you reach out on Facebook or ask mm -hmm. questions about Goblins. I just try to keep it really simple. Every unit in your list is chaff. So I've had people like, well, I don't want to lose my, you know, the most common answer would be like, I don't want to lose my war trombone because they do all the damage. If your war trombone is going to stop a night horde from scoring, throw it away. You know, same with a giant, right? Throw your giant away. So it really works for any game, but with goblins, especially all your units are disposable, but the trade-off is you can't just throw things away. Even Travis list with 20 drops, that unit economy fades real fast if you close to combat too early. So be patient is the most common thing. Like see goblin players start fighting turn one with a all chap list and they die. So you gotta, you gotta be patient before you close because you can't grind like other armies can. Mm -hmm. And then the everything's chaff, be patient. And then the third tip, for goblins, it's more of an army burnout. Proxy your stuff and practice it before you try to build six rabble hordes and then realize you don't like it. Because mm -hmm. so I've seen a lot of goblin armies go on sale because they're like, man, I just I can't play this style. I don't like it. And then you've got months of hobby invested and just test it first. I'll play your blank bases for a week. I don't care. Right. That's my tip for new players. Need. Quiet, Steve. <laughs> Steve, what about you? Basically what Kyle said, it's just... Uh... Be patient. I mean, it's a counterpunch army. You're going to lose stuff. That's okay. Your stuff's probably not going to do anything. That's okay, too. And not to panic. You've got a dragon that pops your lines. It could charge one thing. And you don't care what that one thing is. It's going to take practice. You're going to get in your own way. Yeah. And we're at, what, seven years? Six or seven years each piloting goblins? Yeah. To get to where uh, we are? Yeah, definitely. There's, you're going to have highs and lows with goblins. Because you're going to roll so many dice in a game. Double ones, I can't count the number of times I've won games and still rolled seven double ones because they never mattered. You're going to have all sorts of things happen with goblins. I like the idea, though, of because you're outnumbering your opponents, normally on drops, no matter what, focusing down units. I'm a real big proponent of 
if I outnumber you to begin with, I want to outnumber you at the end of the game. That's a me thing, I think, more than everyone else, but I definitely shoot to kill. You know, that's yeah. that's true. Goblins are not great at cleanup. So if, if you fail to take out a unit that you should have taken out, your army starts to fall apart because we don't have all those little fancy combat heroes darting around just doing that extra wound. What I find is like uh, what some of you have alluded to earlier, which is to just sacrifice one trombone so that even if your shooting doesn't kill it, what's he going to do? Charge that trombone, right? And then you will have another round of shooting to finish it off. That's one of the common tactics. You usually have like easily six to eight elements of shooting, shooting at one or two targets. When the opponent kills off one, great. You, you still have seven left for the next round. It's don't don't worry about losing your trombones, about your losing your wizards, bang it, right? They're all expendable because when you lose one, you still have seven to shoot with next round. So when they're killing all these 60 to 80 point units one at a time, it's it's not economical for them. And that's when they lose the trade war against goblins. All right. Don't allow double charges. Yeah. Yep. Your, your characters suck very badly and will get overran by other units. Yeah, don't allow them don't to allow overrun that, yeah. <laughs> into another that still unit. Gets, that still gets players like me, Travis, and Steve. You get your hero and you miss an overrun and all of a sudden you're like, well, that's two drops for nothing. Great. Right. Yeah. That's why the trombones are great, right? Even though yep. they have uh, triple attacks against it, but they can only just kill that one trombone. So when you have 8 to nerve, it doesn't matter if you triple your attacks. Your heroes and your war trombones will die to the same units. Yeah. And but at least they don't overrun over all trombones right. into another combat. Paige is the newest player. What's your tips? You haven't given us tips. You just stolen our advice. <laughs> <laughs> I did. I, I did what at the start. So don't jam yourself up with the rebel, especially the rebel. And if you have a second wave behind, so that's where that mincer mob regiment with sharpness looks so juicy on paper, right? Oh, I can kill like defense five unit easily. But what I often found myself is people just keep jamming the rebel in front of it. And so my mincers don't get to fight until turn five. Beware of that situation. After that, I did like some self-practice where I just laid out some blank bases in UB. I was like, then I realized, oh, as long as the rebel doesn't die, <laughs> my mincers will never get to charge. Because no matter how I position the mincers, as long as my whole frontage is within the min the the reg the rebel horde my mincers will not get to charge. That was why I downgraded to the troop with skirmisher boots. It's less deadly, but most of I think I'll get that into combat way more often than the mincer regiment with sharpness. That is uh, that, cool, yeah. yeah, that being said, the wine of elven kind oh. costs the same as the brew of sharpness. So if you're running the regiment with sharpness and you do find yourself not getting the mincers into combat quite often, you might want to try swapping it to wine of elven kind. That I think that's worth taking a look at. And when you place, uh, same same problem for trolls. If you place your troll behind your rebel horde, even if you parked it to one side, it will not be able to double charge because 120 is uh, past the halfway mark of the rebel, right? The rebel is 200 wide. So even when you slide, the, the troll can't come in. That is another thing you have to watch out for. I guess placement is key. Another common pitfall that I had was uh, as a shooting army, I think you can't spread your army too wide. Your six rebel can spread out wide if you're running six rebel hordes, but your shooting batteries needs to concentrate together if to have enough firepower to take out the big targets. If you just dot your shooting units all across the board, you'll find that you don't have enough uh, focus of shots to take, uh, take units out and then you just start to crumble then um, especially if you are fighting against units that has uh, healing capabilities because if they don't heal, it's okay, right? I, I don't kill you. I'm going to pile in enough wounds to take you out eventually. But if they have healing capabilities, then that uh, changes the whole equation. So you do need to concentrate your firepower. Do goblins play two-thirds of the board usually? You know, so you have to concentrate your forces so that you don't spread yourself too thin. Do you find that the case, especially Steve and Kyle? Yeah, you can't win. You can't win. If you break the board into six sections, mm. goblins are really good at winning three, being annoying for a fourth, and then your wingets or your flea bag troops are hoping to pick up the others on a lark. If you play every mission as in, I'm going to win two thirds of the mission, you start off on the right foot with goblins because you can't spread out as far as some of the hypermobile armies. And you can't castle as thick as dwarves because you have too many bodies. Yeah. So you end up just going, what are my two thirds? If I win the other one on turn five or six with a cheeky flyer, dope. 
but a small five small victories is still an undefeated GT. Right. Yeah, I often find myself throwing one rebel horde <clears throat> out on that uh final one third of the board that I'm not really looking to win. So I'm just there for the rebel to cause some annoyance. You can't totally ignore it. It has three unit strengths. You can't take it out easily, so it just keeps the opponent busy. Uh, Travis, what about you? Running six and six hordes and one regiment, I think you can spread your rebel all across the entire battle line, right? Yeah, I still I still try to do two thirds though because I can't like with my three shooting groups i still want them to overlap some in case of a bad turn of shooting right you know so i want to make sure i have multiple targets so if i do spike a good roll i can shoot something else then i'm not wasting shots for the for the most part in any army it's tough to go board edge to board edge and expect to control all of it as new players i would say don't don't try that that's just going to lead you to getting outnumbered in multiple areas and then collapsed upon but yeah turtling too much definitely you don't do that with goblins yeah, like you yeah. said, easy to start, hard to master. Again, Travis, what are your three shooting groups? So the wingets, the three wingets are one group, lightning bolts, magua, and the two wizards, along with now the new slasher, and then the three trombones with the three bangets running around um, behind the main line. And then I have the three maw pup launchers for... They can shoot everywhere. Where Yeah, they're kind of just the utility pieces. So. so that's interesting. You group all the lightning bolts together. You yep. group the trombones and the bangets together. That one is a little bit more obvious. And then you, you put the three wingets together. Well, because um, wingets ignore obscuring. So you can layer them right behind each other. So they just peek mm-hmm. and still shoot without cover. Mm-hmm. Yep. They, they'll target anybody out in open terrain. A lot of times what I'll do with the war trombones and stuff is walk up against anything height three or better. Because even shooting over your lines... In cover. Um, in cover, it, it's still 30 shots hitting on fives. You're still going to do damage. Mm-hmm. Travis um, brings up a technique that I do see new players making a mistake. If you have your war trombones following your rabble horde, you cannot go uh, front to back, or in the, the gamer term, we say nuts to butts, but it just means you butt the front of your war trombones to the back of the rabble horde mm-hmm. and then close to combat because you have to be able to disengage one inch. And sometimes right. you can over chunk yourself. So get in the habit. I mean, literally bring a spacer, bring a stick that's one inch wide and keep a one-inch gap between your war trombones and your rabble horde, mm-hmm. and you won't run the risk. And it, eventually, it'll become muscle memory. But even at the GT that I just played at, I had a turn where I accidentally got a war trombone too close, and I wasn't able to pivot it to shoot where it needed to shoot because I had to back it up. Right. So you can... Spacing does matter. That little one-inch clearance is the secret sauce, and you should just practice it until it becomes habit. Yeah, yep. minimum of one inch, right? Because you need, uh, well, if you, you don't need want to, to pivot, because then flyers can land. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But one and a half, I find, is great because you yeah, because you still need to pivot your angle, your yeah, you, basic stick a, forward. Get a, a piece bit. of balsa wood or a piece of plywood, shave it to the right size, and just be like, "That's my space and stick," and use it. <laughs> All right, I think we have covered quite a lot of things. Anyone have anything else? Do you think that I've missed out? Just have oh, fun I, while you're playing. <laughs> I it. suddenly thought eight thousand lines of models, so no <laughs> shortages there. Yep. I'm currently assembling sixty of my hundred and twenty, and that is uh that's five hundred points. That's just less than a quarter of the list. <laughs> I am starting on the most difficult part first, which are the rebel hordes, and which is uh, the, the one that most likely stays in the is, list, right? On my bad page. The last thing I'll say is you can play mm-hmm. goblins just as competitively without a single shooting attack. I've done it. So if you're listening to this going, man, goblins just sound like a shooting army. Don't take any shots. And then it's a non-shooting army. I've taken second at two GTs without a single shot in the list. What are the good and bad matchups for goblins? Or at least the lists that we're running, which is a hybrid and more towards shooting and while Travis is just all trash and all shooting. <clears throat> what are the good matchups? I'll start things off. I know that for the boogeyman out there that everyone's afraid of, which is the greater air elemental lists, goblins are not afraid of it at all because the key thing about greater air elementals is that they jump over the front line and they can't do it against goblins because we have so much stuff behind our rebel. And defense four, they just get shot up very easily. And even if they do get a good surge in, nothing is, uh, everything is expendable for the goblins. So you're not losing like a key hammer or anvil piece. So... They take out one unit and you shoot it down. That's it's what usually happens. So that's something that goblins are not afraid of. I'm theorizing that elves might be a little bit difficult because they have a lot of long-range shooting in their bows and lightning yeah. bolts. So elves, they start elves don't matter. 
to <laughs> they start to put a lot of hurt on you earlier. While the other side of the coin is that they are very elite and fragile, right? And usually they don't have heal. So while the goblins don't have heal too, but the the just the number of nerve points on the board, the, the goblins outnumber the elves by a lot. So I think in the early game, it looks like the elves are winning. But then in the late game, goblins might be able to do quite well against elves still just by the sheer number of units and nerf that they have on the board. While every single point of damage they put on the elf the elf list matters. So that's so I'm not sure whether overall the goblins are advantaged or disadvantaged into elves. So I'd like to seek opinions of the panel over here. What do you what do you guys think? I think elves are a fair fight. Elves I think are, aren't necessarily a problem either. I had two games against elves, one when I was super new to goblins and I basically got trashed in that one. The thing is more of being a new player than bad matchup. And the second matchup against elves I did win uh, on a substantial margin. So that's why I'm not too sure yet. Travis, do you have experience against elves? Yeah, so I feel like most elf lists range between like 12 to 14 drops mm -hmm. because, you know, you get those Dracon hordes that are pretty pricey, uh, Dracon lords, things like that. I feel like goblins, especially with the list we've put out tonight, 19 drops and plus, normally do well against those types of lists. You know, we can lose those things to the shooting first two turns and not care, but by the time they get close or we get close to them, like we're going to drop their bigger, their units generally con more consistently. I definitely, yeah, I know my list, what, four years ago, three years ago now, after the chariots got nerfed, um, I went to this style list and it was mainly to go up against the alpha strike that everybody had been doing all the time. Yeah. And it does very well against that. You know, they're height three. I can shoot no matter what. You know, they're going to charge me all the time and I'm not going to care. Yeah. I, I, those types of lists, the goblins, I feel, just do very well against unless you're just playing all trolls or all, you know, all heavy You can stuff. always skew any list, right? So I, I break it down like this page to make mm -hmm. it simpler than every army because I can play goblins as an alpha strike. You can play goblins as right. a grind list. You can play them as a gun line. So... Everyone always has their combat triangles like hammer, anvil, whatever. That's too mm -hmm. many words for me. So I go with trash, class, and smash. Right? Trash is what we play. Class is the hyper elite armies where they've got their fancy stuff and they hold their pinkies out when they drink their diet Mountain Dew. <laughs> and then smash is what Varinger does and what Frostfangs do. It's it's just go forward with a lawnmower on full blast. So it's trash armies bad. crush class armies and they the goblins do it really well so they actually beat both my biggest problem as a goblin player is other goblin type armies like ratkin kings ratkin. of men they come in and they do just a few less drops than you but their drops are better mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you find yourself unable to answer similar things that you have they're slightly better so, so trash ratkin. beats both and then trash mm -hmm. drops. ratkin's my worst i've lost to ratkin and eod is a huge problem because they can heal through everything what the high about defense heal. Halflings. Have you ever fought halflings? Halflings are cute. They're real. They have a better mincer, and it's not fair. <laughs> they do. But do but we do? Similar. They're in the same vein, right? They, they bring yeah. trash, but better. So they're very tough to beat as goblins too. They do have that innate uh, spell ward on most of their stuff as well. And they have brutal and rally and they no. The the real thing, if you're going to play the sort of trash goblin stuff that we're talking about today. Mm -hmm. your biggest weakness is somebody else bringing almost the same number of drops because their drops will be better than yours. So you mm -hmm. lose the drop economy and you're down in offense or defense. Mm -hmm. So you either want to fight all alpha or all elite or all something. We actually aren't that great against just like a generic all comers list, but no one takes those to tournaments. So we're good. What about Night Stalker? So recently I have a loss against... Night Stalkers running double planner apparition. So that's Hue 14, I believe, because I think each of them is Hue 7. Yeah, because they have uh, stealth across the board, stealthy across the board. Uh, one argument we could say is that most Night Stalker units, in exchange for stealthy, they have lower defense, but the opponent I was fighting against, they do have uh, Butcher Hordes, which is against that general consensus of low defense because they are defense 5. There's uh, Scarecrow Hordes, which, yeah, low defense, but high nerf. Shadow Hulk, high defense and high nerf once again so i do think that i played that game wrongly that i spread my army too wide so i don't have enough concentration of firepower but because they have stealthy right so the moment you don't take that unit out q14 comes in and takes off a lot of those wounds 
is Night Stalker in general a bad or difficult matchup for goblins, especially trash shooty goblins? It can be because they also have tall mind fog and tall lightning bolt, so it's really hard to hide your expensive. Yeah, expensive. I was. It's hard to hide your impactful unit. I was terrified of the plan hyperations, uh, mind fog as well, it was like shattering, and you might uh is e- easily waver the trombones and sometimes just uh kill it off outright with maybe a bit of lightning bolt support from the mind screech. Travis, do you have any experience against night stalkers? Yeah, at uh masters, my two draws were against night stalkers. Ah, uh, so night stalkers could so be our I have, Achilles. I haven't heel. lost to them yet, but I've managed. I've tied them in the big games, so. Mm. They're weak to all melee goblins, but yeah. most players right now aren't taking all melee goblins. But it, it just, there's always going to be a counter, right? So if you want to bring a shooting heavy theme like all of our goblin lists, stealthy will impact you. But mm-hmm. more importantly, any army with tall poke, so forces of nature, kings of men, those wizard pegasus, if they bring those, night stalkers, ogres, ogre warlock spam was a huge problem for most of early third. Ogres themselves are easy to beat. Ogre, Warlock spam, and Sergeant spam was not. Because they'd kill all your tools. And you're just right. left with rabble, which is not what you want. You want to have no rabble and all your tools left at the end of the game. Are there but any that's tips? the real weakness, Paige. If, if they can kill your stuff yeah. in the back line, your army is going to struggle. Because you have to play really cagey all of a sudden and you lose your momentum. Yeah, which is the next question I have. Are there any tips from for screening our toys from the enemy fire, especially if they are height three or taller, because when we are hiding behind our rebel, it's height two. Then uh, if the opponent shooting is height two, then there's no problem, right? Uh, one thing I if also you theorize: can't screen, go fast. Yeah, but we can't, right? Because <laughs> speed five, but just running with our short legs up the board. Um, one thing I did notice is sometimes, most of the time, you don't want to deploy your rebel in terrain actually, because you want to be able to double up ten inches so that you can quickly get close to the enemy. And if you have Goblin in terrain, then they are all often bogged down and couldn't get to where they need to be. Is that something that you guys face? Yeah. I mean, you have to decide right at the beginning. You just have to know from deployment, do I need to be fast or do I need to be durable? Then make that decision and stick with it. You can't... uh, Goblins don't get to redeploy like Angel Armies or Cav Armies. So make your decision at deployment and go... And just remember, you don't want to engage too early. If you start fighting like turn two and you're not ready for it, you're going to run out of drops. Right. And because in the deployment, we do outnumber our opponents so that we tend to have the decision of the last few drops, your drop patterns. Like what are the first few things that you drop when you're deploying? Is it the rebel first? I put down a rebel horde. Or if there's a hill or something that I'm going to put a shooting battery on anyways, Mm. I'll buy five drops with three war trombones and two bang it. Mm-hmm. And then I'll have the rabble horde either in the front or the back. So if, if I know where it has to go anyways, and it's not a secret, you just burned half your enemy's drops, putting your shooting battery down. No unit strength even on the board yet, and your opponent's already halfway done. Right. So you deploy the batteries together because they're, it's very obvious that they're going to go there anyway, right? So Yeah, you see a hill in the middle of the board, you know where my war trombones are going. I might as well burn six drops on it. Gotcha, gotcha. Anything to add on to that, Travis, in terms of deployment? No, that's normally my first drops. I, Wherever the objectives are that I know we need to get to at the middle or end of the game, you know, dominate any, any of those middle tokens. A lot of times, war trombones are right up the center. The middle battery, right? So your first yep. rebel, the three trombones, the inspiring sauce, and whatever peripheral uh, units goes down the middle yep, first. So, uh, yeah, by yeah, that time, I half, think you've nailed it. Yeah, half yeah the they're half down, and yeah. then you, you put your unit strength go. down. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, that's the I huge think that's bonus. Thing you can save a horde or a regiment of rabble, like you said earlier, Paige, where they can just go off on its own and you know score objective, do whatever it needs to do, and it's really no loss to your army. That's where the value of a regiment comes in. You just have one little seventy-five point guy at the end of the game, and he goes, "Oh, there's no one over here. Free token." Yep, that's pretty much what mine does. Awesome. I think that just about wraps it up. I don't think I have any more questions uh, remaining. So we covered the good and bad matchups, deployment tips movement tips uh, like left is resources like if you want to learn more about goblins right you've got goblin green skins on fanatics you've got the goblin fanatic page you can always message me or steve steve likes friends and mm-hmm. travis doesn't talk to people but he's really good at goblin <laughs> i talk to whoever wants to converse with me i just i have four <laughs> kids so i don't get out much <laughs> wow but so facebook's the the main hub right uh thank you Kyle, for 
being more professional than I am. I've never thought of saying that. But anyone has any last words to put out or any shout outs that we'd like to make before we close out the show? Yeah, don't play goblins. It's expensive. <laughs> Is that your <laughs> final summary for That's after I'm, I'm three hours of talking that. about this? Yeah, don't play, don't play goblins. <laughs> I'm to Omaha this summer. July's Masters and Best of the Rest. Everyone is welcome. We are going to be hosting it, so it'll be a blast. Adam and I, Adam, who most people know nowadays, has won Masters this last year for the U.S. We're gonna, him and I are gonna put on the tournament, so it's gonna be a blast. It's a no goblins tournament, right? I mean, they, my goblins won't be there. All right, so it's a no they might be sitting tournament. off to the side to watch, you know, because they got to get their fun in. So this will be the second <laughs> Masters I'll miss in a row. It's all right. Adam Adam has an asterisk by his Master win anyways because I didn't play. So <laughs> he, he juked me too. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> he had some good matchups, that's for sure. I was obviously watching the whole time. So All right. With that, I think we can close out the show. And thank you, everyone, for listening in. And thank you to my guests, Travis. Steve and Kyle for coming on to talk shop about goblins for coming to three hours now and we'll call it a day. See you everybody. Bye. Later. Bye. Bye.